Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Hey, hey, hey everyone. Um, I'm gonna do this live uh, right now and then I think I may go live again tonight around 8.30 just to have another discussion because I did put up a post just kind of asking people when would be the best time for me to do this live stream because I want to make sure everyone that follows me, that followed me back then that never really got a lot of answers and that follows me now that just doesn't even know about it and has heard me mention it a couple times that you guys uh, kind of get all your answers and I can explain really what, what went down. So I put up a post asking people what would be the best time and I said, you know, maybe around 4.30, maybe around 8.30. And of course, uh, you know, I had people say, you know, 8.30 because I'll be off work and then I had people say 4.30. Uh, so I think I'm going to do this now and I think I'll uh, do it again, maybe go live again later today and we can just kind of talk again about it maybe. So, for anyone new here, I just ate, so, um, sorry. This is a long time coming. Definitely a long time coming. To everyone new here, yes, I was arrested. I have been on YouTube since April 2019. So, when I was arrested, I was a YouTuber already, and somehow, um, when I started my channel, I kind of grew fairly quickly uh, at the beginning uh, of my channel, starting my channel. I started out doing makeup and about a month or so into makeup, I switched over to Teen Mom stuff, reality TV stuff, and um, and I grew, grew pretty quickly. And uh, I remember Googling, you know, how long it takes a channel to hit the milestones to be monetized. Not that I was, uh, I wasn't really doing YouTube to be monetized, but when I started growing, I thought, wow, that would be cool if I could do something that I, that I love and, you know, make money for my family. So I remember looking it up and it said that it takes about a year on average for channels to get monetized. And I thought, okay, well, yeah. You know, somewhere down the line that'll happen. It actually happened the next month. I actually got monetized in a short period of time. I actually was going, grow, growing fairly quickly. And then um, I started hitting some road bumps uh, because I started having trouble with another creator. Now, I'm going to try not to mention that creator as much as possible, but that creator does come into play with my arrest because the reason that everyone found out about it is because she blasted it. So, unfortunately, it's going to have to be brought up. So, anyways... um. I have been on YouTube since April. I had a following of about 17,000 people, maybe 18,000 people at the time. And um, it was December 28th. And um, hey, 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 everyone. Yeah, I, a lot of people, I, I've mentioned it several times, but people don't really know. So I was arrested on December 28th. Keep in mind... There was a lot of drama surrounding me at that time because I was having a lot of issues with uh, Katie Joy from Without a Crystal Ball. So there was a lot going on between me and her. There, there was this back and forth. Um, my nephew had passed away on December 3rd. I was not on YouTube. My channel had been mass flagged and I was not allowed to go live or um, I think at the time I wasn't allowed to go live, but I think I could do pre-recorded videos. I don't remember. Um, but anyways, when my nephew passed away, I really kind of pulled the reins in and was like, I'm just going to disappear from social media for a while. There's a lot going on. You know, when I made the decision to start a YouTube channel, never in a million years did I think I would grow to, to having a following of $17,000. And I definitely never thought that I would be um, fighting... You know, within, I never thought that I would be fighting with another YouTuber. You know what I'm saying? I just never thought that that would happen. So, um, I'm, I don't fight with people in real life. Like, I don't have enemies. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't fight with people in real life. So, I definitely never thought that I would be fighting with another YouTuber. So, um, anyways... Um, I was away from YouTube for a little bit. After my nephew passed away, my entire family got really sick with what we know now to be COVID. Um, I was in the bed for like a week. Sean was in the bed for like a week. We were all very ill, very sick. Christmas was coming up. So my daughter um, had ordered some stuff uh, online. 
right? It was a part of her Christmas stuff. It, she was um, ordering some stuff online for Christmas, and it was going to come to our house, and, you know, of course, I would wrap it, whatever. And um, unfortunately, it went to our old address. Whenever she ordered it, she didn't check to make sure that she clicked on the new address, which we had been here for some time anyways, but we've been here for about two years. But it still had our old address on file, so it went to the old address. We figured it out that it was going to the old address, contacted the company. They said, you know, if you get it, if that, if the people that lives in that house now, if they happen to contact you and you get it, send it back. If not, we're sending another package. It is what it is, whatever. Um, thankfully, thankfully, the people that live in our old home actually did reach out to me. Um, yeah, Amy, a lot of people believed her. I actually have, I was actually going over them while ago. I was going through all my emails of stuff that I had to send my lawyer of so many comments on Twitter and YouTube of people talking kind of, you know, not bad, but people that just believed it. You know what I'm saying? People talking about it. Um, a lot of people believed her. But anyways, so um, the lady that lives in our old house contacted me and said, hey, we have a package here at my husband works, so I don't have a car during the day, but after, you know, hours, I can meet you somewhere, and we can give you the package, and I thought, sure, you know, I'll just get the package, I'll mail it back, no biggie, so I was supposed to meet this lady, like, three different times, and she kept, can't, can't you know, canceling on me, and uh, husband working late, whatever, so this Saturday, uh, she messaged me that day, and said, hey, I'm, I'll be able to meet you today. And I said, okay, yeah, sure. Um, so later that evening, we we needed milk. Um, her husband was about to get off work, so I reached out to her and said, hey, I'm going to head that way in a little bit. I should be there around X, Y, Z. Will that be a good time for you? And I remember she wasn't going to meet me at her house. She was going to meet me right up the street from her house, which was our old house. I didn't really know why, but whatever. Um, so I remember leaving here that day. I wore a cardigan. I had a cardigan on. Um, I don't know why that's uh, funny to me, but yeah. Yeah, Lynette, there's a lot of drama that goes back between me and Katie. When I was new, she just attacked me out of nowhere, like, so badly. Um, there's a whole series on my channel of what happened between me and her. Um, because people don't really, no, you're, no, uh, Susie, I'm sorry, I'm not really keeping up with the chat that well, you're not blocked, Susie, I'm just seeing, I'm just seeing, like, every other comment, but there is a, um, I have, like, a series on my channel of what took place between me and Katie, and how she attacked me for no reason, like, it was, it was wild, um, but yes, so, um, I had not been on YouTube in a couple of weeks, I was just kind of dealing with my, what was going on with my family, losing my nephew, recovering from, you know, this terrible illness that we didn't know what it was. Um, yeah, we didn't know what it was, you know, we just knew that we were terribly sick. So, that evening, I wasn't even 100% yet, I just was, you know, when you get COVID, I swear it takes like six months before you're 100% yet. You know what I'm saying? So I wasn't 100% yet, but I was where I wasn't like in the bed anymore. So anyways, I, I messaged the lady and I'm like, hey, you know, um, I'm about to head that way. It'll take me about 35 minutes to get there. Um, I'll text you when I have to get closer. Oh, it's okay, Lynette. I I'll text you when I get closer. And she's like, yeah, that's fine. I have a... A, a, a black Yukon with blacked out windows and 24 inch rims. My husband bought my rims and my friend uh, got my windows tinted for my birthday. Um, so anyways, I leave here a lot of, so we live on back streets. Um, we live on back streets and I pull out, I get in my car, and I set my phone on the console. I plug it up to auxiliary where it's playing over the radio. And I was listening to a friend of mine who also has a YouTube channel who was talking about, you know, craziness going on or whatever. So um, we have cameras, like, in our house, all on the outside or whatever. So when I got, I actually watched the footage uh, later on of me, like, leaving. 
Um, I get in my car, I set everything up, I put my seatbelt on because I always drive with my seatbelt. Like I always wear my seatbelt. So I back up, I pull out, and I get not even four miles from my house when I look in my I look in my rearview mirror and I see cops. There's a cop directly behind me, and there's a cop in the the other side of the road. And I think, oh my God, like what is going on? Where are they trying to go? Like something's, ha you know, something's happening. Um, like what is going on? So I put my blinker on and I go to get over and like that one cop goes like beside me and I thought, okay, they're going somewhere. They're not stopping me, you know, they're going somewhere. Um, but when I pull over, I, I noticed that this cop that just went by me pulls over in front of me. So I'm like, oh my goodness. And our, our boys are the Backstreet Boys. <laughs> our boys are the back because we live on back streets you're so funny um so any <laughs> anyways i noticed that this cop is stopped in front of me and there's like three more cars behind me of cops right so i'm like oh my goodness what is going on and mind you i don't get in trouble in school i didn't get in trouble i was like the kid that did their homework i was scared to not do my homework um you know, I just, I've always tried to be, like, a good person, a good kid. Like, i never been in trouble with the law, so I was terrified. So, I, um, I think to myself, when they find out who I am and run my name and run my husband's name, they're going to see that we've never been in any type of trouble. This must be some sort of mistake. Like, the car is registered in my husband's name. He's a vet. Like, you no trouble at all. So, I don't know what they're trying to do here, but four cop cars is definitely not necessary. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, anyways, uh, I just think there's a mistake, you know. So, I roll my window down expecting that one of the cops is going to walk up to me and ask for my license and registration. That didn't happen. Over like this like loudspeaker, I hear, driver, show your hands. And I'm like, oh my goodness, they're not even taking the chance to come up to me, you know. So I put my hands out of the window and then they tell me to open the car, you know, from the outside and to get out. But I can't because I have my seatbelt on because I'm a law-abiding citizen, you know. So I'm like... Sir, I have my seatbelt on, and I, I didn't even want to tr just try to disengage it, you know, I, um, because I was scared to bring my bring my arm back into the car. Mind you, at this point, they all are pointing objects at me. They're all pointing things at me, right? Um, clearly weapons, you know what I'm saying? They're clearly pointing their guns at me. So, I'm terrified if I pull my arm back in the car to disengage my seatbelt that they're going to, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? So, anyways, um, I tell them I, I, my seatbelt is engaged. I need to disengage my seatbelt. Is that okay? And they're like, with one hand, disengage your seatbelt. So, I pull one hand in and I, you know, disengage my seatbelt and um, I put my hands back out and I open the car. And just naturally, I just went to face where the majority of the cops were, you know, behind me. I just went to face that way. And when I stepped out like that way, they're like, face away, face away. And I'm like, oh my God, okay, okay, okay. Now, um, I want to tell you guys that my son was supposed to go with me, who at the time was 12. My son is of darker complexion. He has black hair, very dark skin tone. Um, he usually wears hoodies. You know, always got his AirPods in. He was supposed to go with me that day. So, had because we were going to go get the package, then go to Walmart to get milk. So, um, had my son went with me, I don't even know what would have happened. Like, I really don't even know. So, um, I uh, turn my back to the cops. There's one cop in front of me with, you know, his gun pointed to me. There's officers behind me, and I know they have their weapons pointed at me. And um, I'm in the town that I live in, and there's just traffic going by. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, I know there's people probably going by right now that I know. Like, I, I, I didn't spot anybody, but I live in a small town. So I'm walking backwards. And the second I get to, like, the first officer, he yanks my hands 
cuffs me and puts me on the ground and starts yelling at me, asking, why didn't I stop? Why didn't I stop? And I'm thinking, well, how the hell did we get in this position if I didn't stop? You know what I'm saying? Clearly, I stopped. So I'm like, I did stop. What are you talking about? What are you like? I, I'm stopped. And he says, we've, we've been behind you for five miles. You didn't hear us? And I'm thinking in my head, I don't even live five miles from here, but what? You know, and I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I have my radio playing. My windows are tinted. Like, I'm deaf in one ear. I'm like trying to think of, of, of like all the reasons why I didn't hear them or see them, you know? And I'm like, y'all, I'm like, was your, um, your lights going? And they're like, yes, you know? So I'm like, this, I don't know. This just doesn't make any sense because I could have swore, uh, about a quarter of a mile back when I was passing my kid's school that I actually looked in my mirror and I, like, I don't remember seeing anybody, you know? So another cop was like, they gave me, one cop said five miles, one cop said four miles, and one cop said four and a half, or a little over four, something along those lines. I got three, from from the cop, from three different cops, they told me, like, different, you know, like, oh, five miles, four and a half, a little over four, um, when I didn't even live four miles from there. So, um... Anyways, as I'm like, I don't know, I have, you know, I'm just, I, I don't know, I'm like, I'm here, I stopped. Another cop comes around and says, he says, um, do you have any drugs on you? And I said, no, I, no, I don't have drugs on me. I, I don't do drugs. I'm a mom. <laughs> I'm a mom. I don't do drugs. And he says, we're going to, we're going to tear that car apart until we find the effing drugs or something along those lines. He said the F word, either we're going to tear the effing car apart until we find the drugs, or we're going to tear that car apart until we find the effing drugs, one or the other. So I'm like, no, I don't I, I do not do drugs, you know? So he and one of the other cops, they go to the passenger side of my car. I can't see them. They go to the passenger side. There's another cop that goes to the coming up on the driver's side, and they're banging. So as they're going up, like, on the passenger side and the driver's side, they got guns, and they're like, Passenger, show yourself. Passenger, show yourself. And I'm like, there's no one else in the car. It's just me. And I'm thinking to myself, thank God my son did not come with me. Because my son would have been terrified. He would have been so scared to be sitting in the front seat and to see me back there. And he wouldn't know what to do. He probably would have froze up. And then they probably would have think, thought that he was just not trying to listen. And they probably would have pulled him out of the car. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even know what would have happened if my son would have been in the car with me. So I'm so happy that my son was not with me. He was supposed to go, but when I went to leave, I stuck my head in his room and I said, hey, baby, you riding? And he said, no, I'm going to stay here and play the PlayStation. So thank God. Misty, I wonder if YouTube uh, blocked your comment because I didn't block your comment. And I don't know if any of the mods would have... Um, so, YouTube will hold comments from time to time. I've seen YouTube hold the comments before. So, it might, it may have been YouTube. Um, so, anyways. Keep in mind, one of the last times I was on YouTube, I had made the comment, I don't have any bad habits. I don't do drugs. I don't smoke. And it was because of some drama going on between me and Katie. <laughs> and then, of course, I get pulled over and I get, you know. Um, so, anyways. Um, I'm like sitting on the ground at this time, I, I, I think, uh, and he's questioning me about why I didn't pull over. And I'm just like, I did like, this is when I saw you. This is when I pulled over. And he's like, well, I've been following you for this long. You never seen our lights. And I'm like, no. And he's like, you didn't hear our sirens. And I'm like, no. Um, cause, because if I would have, I absolutely would have pulled over. Like, I'm not lying to you. Um, so it's not two minutes that the two cops, you know, ran up on the passenger side of my car and they're searching my car. It's not even two minutes that one of the other cops comes from around the car and says, if you don't do drugs, what is this? And he's holding 
he's holding like a sandwich bag like this big and it's kind of like like this you know and there's like nothing in it like I don't see it all I see is a sandwich bag it's you know it, it's all I see is like a sandwich bag so he's like if you don't do drugs then what is this and I'm like I'm like I don't know what is it you know he says it looks like cocaine to me and I'm like no 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 I'm like no you know there's not cocaine in my car like you there's no way there's cocaine in that you did not just find cocaine in my car so then i'm like where did you find where, where where did you find that at you know and he says in your um in your middle console right on top of everything in your middle console and i'm like what like i'm sure if there was a ziploc bag in my middle console especially on the top of everything i would have noticed you know what i'm saying hold on a second you guys So I'm like, no, I would have noticed that, right? <sighs> um, so anyways. Well, yeah, <laughs> I was actually told there's not cocaine in this town, but who knows? So anyways, um, I'm just like, no. And they're like, do you have a problem? And I'm like, no, I don't have a problem. And I had some um, Zovaran tablets in a, uh, Zovaran is a prescription for nausea, right? So I had Zovaran and I don't even remember why I had it. It had been prescribed to me like a long time ago. And it's just for nausea. It's not a narcotic. It's not, um, it, it's not a narcotic, it's not, you know, um, it is a prescription. It's a prescription for nausea, but it's nothing that gets you high. But I had had a prescription for not for uh, Zovaran in my purse. So um, they're asking me if I have a problem. I'm like, no, I don't have a problem. I'm crying. I'm like, I don't have a problem. They're like, are you sure you don't have a problem? I'm like, I'm sure. It, yeah, I probably got it when I was pregnant. And um, then they say, well, what about the pills in your, in your purse? And honestly, I didn't even think about it at first. I'm like, huh? And they're like, the pills in your purse. And I'm like, Zovaran? And they're like, that's a narcotic. And I'm like, that's not a narcotic. It, it's just nausea medicine. Like, it's not a narcotic. And, um, yeah, it's harmless, right? So they say, you're not supposed to operate heavy, heavy machinery when you're under the influence of that medication that's in your purse. And I'm like, I'm not taking it. Like, I haven't even taken Zovarian. Like, I'm one of those people, which right now I have a small purse. But, like, when I have bigger purses, God knows what you might find in my purse. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, literally. Who knows what you might find in it? So, I'm like, I don't, like, I don't know, but it's, it's not a narcotic. Like, I swear. So then they, um, they insist that I have a problem and they want me to do the, uh, you know, walk the straight line, watch the pen, do the, you know, finger to nose tip or whatever. So I do that and, um, I obviously do it fine because a few minutes later they had me do it again. And then, then when I was getting a uh, book, they had me do it again. So they were just trying to get me to, uh, fail you know, this roadside test. So, um, or this, um, bill sobriety test. So anyways, they're like still searching all over my car. Um, and there's the, it's literally a sandwich bag and I literally couldn't see anything in it. And I'm confused by it. Cause I'm like, I don't even see anything in it. Like in the very, this is how crazy it was. So in the very teeny tiny corner, like on one side, there was like a little residue from where chalk, Chalk, right? So I have six kids. My daughter, Kennedy. Actually, we kept chalk. Sean has a um, workbench outside under our carport. And we used to always keep chalk in a Ziploc bag on that workbench. That way, when I took the kids outside, you know, we would have chalk up there because we have a carport. So we just get the chalk. Now, a couple of months before that, my front end on my Yukon went out and Sean completely repaired it. 
when he would be out there working to repair it, Kennedy would go out there with him. So what would he do? Give her the chalk and she would, you know, color. When I got back in my Yukon after Sean fixed it, it was sidewalk chalk. When I got back in my Yukon after Sean fixed it, <laughs> Kennedy had written like all over the car in chalk and I had to like clean it all up. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, they, uh, the, one of the cops takes his knife out of his belt and he goes to the depths of that sandwich bag to get any little residue that he can uh, out of the bag and he puts it in this little pouch. And um, once he has it in the pouch, he closes the pouch up and he busts these little tubes and he's like flicking it and shaking it. And this is a cocaine pouch. This is a this is testing for um, cocaine. I want to share you guys. Okay, so this is what it is. This is, But this is for fentanyl, right? So that's fentanyl. This is not for um, cocaine. But it looks just like that. Um, and it, it shows you the colors that it'll turn if it is a positive, right? So th there's still cops in my um, car digging. Um, there is cops over there with me, you know, talking to me. Uh, there's the cop doing this test. And... Um, as he's like shaking it and flicking it, he says, I don't, I've never seen it do this. It's not, it's not showing anything. Like I've never seen it do this before. So I'm not sure what this means. Let me see if I can find a cocaine one. This is the cocaine one right here. So this is what the cocaine one looks like. Identical. This is exactly what they had. So um, the cop says, I've never seen it do this before. I'm not sure. Like, I, I don't know what this means. And the cop that initiated the stop and the cop that cuffed me and put me on the ground, he grabs it and looks at it and starts shaking it and starts flicking it. And he goes, oh, yep, that's right. Mm, yep, I see it. It's a positive. And I'm like, what? I'm like, can you show me? I live in Louisiana. I'm like, can you show me what you're looking at? Because I don't know what I'm looking at, but I know that when I get home, I'm going to do my research to figure out, I didn't know what it was at the time, KP. I actually didn't think about it until like I had been home for a couple of days. And that's when I realized, holy crap, it is our kid, th that was our kid's chalk. Um, the bag of chalk was no longer up there and it made sense that when Kennedy was in my car and she had drew all over my car, she just left the bag in there. And probably when I got in to clean it, um, I pro or maybe, you know, maybe one of the siblings just threw the bag in there. Either way, it was chalk. Um, Definitely wasn't drugs. So, anyways. So, um, the first cop was like, yeah, I don't know. I've never seen it do this. And the other cop's like, let me see it. So, he gets it and he flicks it and he's shaking it. And he's like, yeah, I see right there. Look, right there. And he shows the other cop. And he's like, see? See those little specks? And the cop's like, Oh, yeah, I, I guess, you know. And then I'm like, can I see it? Can I can I see what you're looking at? This is the thing. Everybody that's asking why did they pull me over in the first place, I never knew. I never knew why they pulled me over. They did not tell me why they pulled me over. I finally kind of figured it out when I was being booked. And I'll get to there, get to that in a little bit. So, um, anyways... Uh, so I, I, I'm looking and all I see is clear. Like all I see is clear. Let me see if I can show you guys with a positive. Uh, what a positive cocaine result looks like.
how can I look this up? Because I've seen it so many times before. <laughs> okay, this is it. Here we go. Let me see if I can find... Okay, so it kind of looks like this, right? Except, except they busted all of these va these little tubes. So these are tubes, those little things right there. As you guys can see, there's like a pink and there's like two clear. They busted those little tubes and when they bust them, the colors will mix all together. So it says here, a positive is a blue, a, blue, a, a pink with blue specks. Or a pink or a half pink, half blue. Like any color is like basically um, a, a positive. You know what I'm saying? As long as it's like all the liquid has to turn pink or blue or a mixture. It's not specs. Literally when he said this in front of my face, because I'm like, can I see? When he put it in front of my face, all I could see was a clear bag right and he's like do you see that and i'm like not really sir I, I don't see anything he's like look closely you see those specks right there like one's down in the corner right and i'm like i literally have to adjust my eyes and i'm like okay yeah i see a couple specks he's like what does it say on the back once again i have to adjust my eyes again to see that it says cocaine and i'm like cocaine and he's like yep that's what you have in your car i'm like there's no way i don't have cocaine in my car i don't do drugs i'm telling you i don't do drugs um, uh, sorry. I'm like, I'm telling you, I don't do drugs. No way. That's not what it is. Let me try to get myself back up on here bigger. Oh, sorry. And he's like, yep, that's what it is. So several times I'm like, can y'all drug test me? Please drug test me. Like, I, please. And he says, can you pass? And I said, yes, I can pass. I don't do drugs. Like I swear, just drug test me. And he says, well, we're not charging you with being under the influence. We're charging you with um, being in possession. And I'm like, I, I'm going to jail? And he's like, yes, ma'am, you're going to jail. And they kind of went on and on about the, the pills in my purse. Uh, do you have a problem? You know, and I'm like, those pills don't make you anything. They're for nausea, like, uh it, they're fine and I haven't taken one like it's fine you know and um he's like uh I mean I was on the side of the road for like four hours between everything that was going on and I asked if I could call my husband to come get my car and they're like no we're gonna tow it and I said well can we use this particular towing company because I know them he's like no we're gonna use this other one thankfully my mom knew the other one so um, there were four cars there in total, and what's so crazy is the one that initiated the stop and the one that actually drove me to jail, both of them, them guys were at my house the night before, because about two weeks before that, the other YouTuber, without a first of all, had, um, looked my bankruptcy information up on Pacer and paid for it. She announced it. She said, um, she went live on her Instagram, and she said, um, I looked up LB's uh, bankruptcy information, and she go, goes over my bankruptcy information and says that we're not paying my bankruptcy and that my, our, my car is going to get repossessed and all kind of information. So when this happened, remind, remind you guys, I was kind of away from YouTube at the time. I wasn't... Um, very present on YouTube because I was dealing with the loss of my nephew, everybody getting sick, and all the drama that I was dealing with with this other creator. So I was I was away from YouTube. Now, obviously, when Katie blasted my bankruptcy information, I found out. You know, people called me immediately. Oh my God, Katie is on Instagram. You know, talking about you being in bankruptcy, which I had already mentioned that I was in bankruptcy. My husband worked. Uh, my husband is a veteran. He served two tours, one in Iraq, one in Afghanistan, and he was, uh, he worked for Noble Drilling for 10 years, and he was an assistant um, driller when he got laid off. He had been an assistant driller for a few years, and we were making a decent living. We had 
several children when the oil industry crashed in 2016 and he got laid off. And we were able to make it for like a year on savings. During this time, no oil field company was hiring because everyone was laying off. And we lived in such a small town that there was no jobs here really that was hiring. There were no jobs here that you would even make the money that he was used to making that would pay our bills. Thank you. You don't look like any drug addict I've ever seen. Unfortunately, I went across a few of my life. Thank you. What's so crazy is when I was arrested, there was people saying the exact opposite. There was literally people like under Katie's under Katie's post about my arrest saying, I knew she was a drug addict. She looked like one. And I'm like, I have like super healthy hair. I'm not skinny. I mean, I'm not big. Like I'm not big, but I'm definitely not like my face, like my face is full. Like I, I didn't understand it, but that's what people were saying. Um, so anyways, so they're like, uh, you know, we're, they asked, I said, can we call this tow company? No, we're going to call this one. Okay, whatever. Um, oh, oh yeah. So the cops, the cops that, the one that initiated the stop and the one that brought me to jail. So when Katie released my information about my, bank, about my bankruptcy, at first I was just going to ignore it. I was like, I don't care. I had people contacting me left and right to tell me what, what, about what Katie did. I was like, I don't care. This was on December 14th. I was like, I don't care. I don't want to hear it. I, it is what it is. I don't care. Um, finally, as time went on and I got kind of better from the sickness and I started kind of coming around, I had someone send me the information to send me the video of where Katie blasted my bankruptcy information. Because up until this point, up until December 27th, I had not watched it. I just had a lot of people telling me about it. Um, but I hadn't watched it. Well, on the December 27th, Someone was talking to me about it again. I was like, Katie said this and that your car note was this and you hadn't paid it in this many months. And I'm like, you know what? Just go ahead and send me the video. Let me watch it. So the person sent me the video. And when I watched it, I was just so like beside myself that she put that out that she admitted, yes, I paid for her bankruptcy information. Katie is another YouTuber. So I was like, you know what? I need to do something about this. Like, surely this is not legal. Like, surely you just can't pay for someone's information. I used to run a finance company called World Finance. I managed it. And we used Pacer all the time. So Katie runs the channel without a crystal ball. We used Pacer all the time. We had an account with Pacer. One of the things that Pacer says is you are not to use this information, um, like, against someone. You know what I'm saying? Like, the information that you see on pacer or you get from pacer you're not supposed to like blast it to the masses it's not supposed to be used in a malicious way so i was like you know maybe something can be done and my friend who i was talking to at the time was like maybe you should call the cops and see about getting a restraining order and i was like you know what maybe so so i contacted my lo you know the local police and i said this is the deal i need somebody over here so i can figure out if i can get a restraining order on this youtuber so the cop that come to my house that day, it was that evening, it was around five, five in the evening. I know, right? Right, Slinky? Who cares? Uh, it was about five in the evening. And when he came, I just went outside. Thank you. Any sense of a human knows you're not a drug addict. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> Cheryl, I know. Um, so I... I, he didn't come in my house when he when he come up to the door. I said, here, let's step outside. I'm at first because I didn't want my children to hear, really hear about what was going on. My children obviously ended up all coming outside and riding their bikes. But this cop was at my house for about 45 minutes. As I told him, I said, listen, I'm a YouTuber, and um, I've been having some problems with this other YouTuber. And she recently paid for my bankruptcy information off Pacer and blasted it on her social media account where she literally has where she literally has like 50,000 subscribers and um, she, some of the information that she told was not correct. So what can I do about this? Like, can I get a restraining order? He was at my house for like 45 minutes. Before he left, another cop showed up. Um, he stood there for a few minutes and they both kind of told me what my options were. They were like, um, they, they were like, well, to get a restraining order, the judge needs to see evidence that you feel threatened. You know, like physically threatened. Like this person would harm you. 
And I don't think a judge is going to agree that this YouTuber from Minnesota is going to hop on a plane and drive all the way down here to hurt you. So maybe the better option would be is just to document this harassment, the cyberbullying, and, you know, um, after you get enough, maybe then take it to a judge and press charges for harassment. I said, okay, we'll do. That's what I'll do. So the next day, the next night, Saturday night, when I was driving, and this cop got behind me, it was the second cop that it showed up at my house. When it rains, it storms, but just stay being your sweet self on. Sorry you had to go through all that. Thank you so much, Slinky. Thank you. Um, so it was weird because they acted like they didn't know who I was. Like they acted like they had never seen me before. It was very strange. Um, they're claiming that I have drugs in my car. I'm trying to tell them several times. I'm a stay-at-home mom. Um, I'm a YouTuber. Um, I don't do drugs. I have six kids. Uh, they they go on and on about the medicine in my car, and I'm like, they're insistent that it's like a narcotic, and I'm like, it's not. It's Ondestron, or like the generic version of um, Zovaran is like Ondestron or something like that, you know? And um, they, they keep asking me, are you sure you don't have a problem? And I'm like, I don't have a problem. I asked them several times, can I take a drug test? Uh, finally, they told me, you know, it doesn't matter if you can pass a drug test because we're not charging you with being under the influence. Um, but like I said, they did try because they made me do the field sobriety test twice on the side of the road and then once again at the, the facility. So anyways, they finally, you know, are going to take me to jail. So they, I'm already handcuffed. I don't know why I was about to say they handcuffed me. That was the first thing that they did. Handcuffed me down on the ground. Um, but he's walking me to his car and he says, I don't know you. You don't know me. I've never dealt with you before, but this car is clean. I just cleaned it. So once I get you out of here, if I find anything in this car, you're going to catch a charge for that too. And I'm like, what? I'm like, you do, like, you were at my house last night. And he's like, what? And I'm like, you was at my house last night. And he kind of looks at me. I'm like, the YouTuber who called y'all about the other YouTuber buying her finances and blasting them on social media? And he's like, oh, well, there better not be nothing in this car. Just really like rude and me, and I'm not crying. I'm not bucking them. I'm not telling them they can't do anything. I'm crying. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, it's clear that I'm like not well. So, anyways, he puts me in the car, and I'm in the car for like another 45 minutes before he comes and drives me to jail. Um, when he finally comes and gets in the car, she sure as heck you if it was reversed have you consulted an attorney about her doxing here but yes my attorney has everything like my attorney has everything um, I was actually I was actually just going over before I started this live I was actually just going over um, <laughs> everything that I had sent to my attorney because it was like videos of Katie like talking crap about me about my arrest and saying things don't happen this way when I when it did. Um, so anyways, um, the cop finally comes and gets back in the car after, you know, leaving me in the car for like 45 minutes. And my hair was like up in a ponytail, but not all of it was like by this time, like some of the side, it kind of fell down. And I remember being in the car and my, like my cuffs were on and the air kept blowing, like my hair kind of in my face and I couldn't get it out. It was just really uncomfortable. I was cold and I couldn't get my hands to reach around to like move my hair like out of my face because it was literally being blown in my face. And I just remember thinking, oh my God, I hope he hurries up because I, I can't stay like this much longer, you know? Um, so he comes and gets to the car and I ask him, I'm like, so when is the soonest I'm gonna be able to bond out? And he says, well, the judge is on Christmas vacation and won't be back until January 8th. Mind you, it's December 27th. And I'm like, oh my gosh. My husband had just got a job. Sean had just got a job a couple weeks before that. And um, I think he, he got the job in October, I want to say. So he was still on his 90-day like probation period. Like when you start most jobs, you have like 90 days where you can't miss. You have to make sure you are like doing your job because they'll fire you for anything, right? So anyways, um. He tells me January 8th because the judge is out of town for vacation, for, for Christmas vacation. And I'm like, 
Oh my God, Sean has to go to work Monday. There's no way that I'm going to be able to have somebody to keep the kids that long because all my people work too. So Sean's going to have to take off work. What's he going to tell his work? He's probably going to like lose his job, you know, like it was terrible, you know, it was terrible. So um, then I was stressing about that. And mind you, I, I'm going to jail and I've just been told basically that I'm going to have to spend um, like 10 days in jail, basically. So I'm like terrified. So the way it is, is they take you to the men's facility to book you. And then they take you to the women's facility. So I'm taken to the men's facility. My husband still doesn't know where I'm at. At this point, I've been gone for like five hours, four and a half, five hours. Um, I was just supposed to go to meet this woman to get, you know, the package and then go to Walmart. Um... I don't know if she's ever come out to say that she was wrong, that I am. I'm not sure. Possibly. I don't know. But I'm not sure. So, anyways. Um, so, we get to the men's facility, and um, there's another woman there. And she's sitting on a bench. They sit me on a bench beside her. She's an elder lady. And I sit, they, they take my cuffs off and they sit me beside her. And I'm crying. And she says, what'd they get you for? And I said, I don't know. They said I had cocaine in my car, but I, I didn't. I swear I didn't. And she says, they got me for being drunk, but I'm drunk. And I'm like, oh, oh okay. You know, and she's like, she's like drunk. Really, she's drunk. She's like, I'm from Lafayette. I don't know what I'm going to do because I don't have nobody's phone number. Every phone number is in my phone. I don't remember phone numbers, so I don't know how I'm getting out of this one. And I'm just like, I'm so sorry. You know, she's like, no, it's fine, babe. And I have six kids. Of course I have chalk, but I'm so funny about chalk now. You guys can ask anybody. Don't get us chalk. We don't want chalk. Um, so the, the guy that brought me in, he goes into this room. He's in this room for a minute, and then this state trooper comes out. And the state trooper was like, come here to me. And he makes me do another, you know, uh, walk the line and follow my pen. And once again, they were doing everything in their power for me to fail that. Even though I had already done it twice on the side of the road and passed, if I would have somehow not done perfect on that third one, I would have got a DUI or DWI, even if, even though I had already done it twice and passed, right? So once again, he makes me do the, I do it. And as I'm done and I turn around to walk away, the lady says, um, the lady says something along the lines of, she's not drunk. And then she goes, I am. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And he says, ma'am, she's under the influence or something like that. He doesn't say that I'm drunk. I think he says maybe that she, oh, he says, ma'am, she's impaired. And by this time I've like sat down and I'm like, sir, this ain't even one of the, this is not even one of the cops that's pulled me over. He, he I hadn't seen this guy. He's a state trooper. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, sir, what am I impaired by? Like, what do you, what do you mean I'm impaired? And he says, the pills that was in your purse, you, you're impaired. And I said, sir, that those pills don't impair you. But I haven't taken anything. Like, I, even the medicine in my purse, I hadn't taken it. Um, so, I, no, I'm not impaired. And I said, besides, like, that medicine does not impair you. There's no warning on the side when you drive to pick it up. They don't tell you nothing. You know, they don't tell you you shouldn't be driving. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. And he's like, ma'am, the medication in your purse, you are not supposed to operate heavy machinery. And if you took it, you are impaired. So I, then I'm thinking, well, I bet I ain't being charged with a DUI, though, am I? You know what I'm saying? Which I wasn't. So once again, um, they, you know, take my fingerprints, my mugshot, and literally, you guys, I'm like crying. I'm not well. And I remember the guy that did my fingerprints and took my mugshot was like, he was nice. He was really nice. Like, or all these other guys, I felt like they were a-holes. This guy was really nice, and I almost felt like he was a little immature. I don't know, like, 
immature to be like a grown man. It's almost like he acted like, it was like he acted like, I don't know. He was just really nice. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, I'm like, I can, I'm shaking when they're trying to take my fingerprints. And I remember he's like, I'm going to have to press your fingers down because I can't get a good reading, okay? And I'm like, okay. And he's like pushing my hands down. And um, I'm like, when is the soonest that I'm going to be able to get out? And he says, I'm not sure, but the judge is out into the 8th. And I'm like, I can't stay in until the 8th. And I remember there was, so directly behind me was a jail cell because this is the men's facility. Directly behind me is a jail cell and there's like a man in there. And at one point, the man in there was like, don't worry about it, baby girl, you got this or something like that. I'm like, I look at the guy that's like doing my hair and I'm like, who's he talking to? And he's like, he's talking to you, but ignore him. Don't talk to him. I'm like, okay. So I go and I sit back down. And when the cop that that's brought me there, that's going to take me to the other facility, when he comes out of that room, um, he asks the guy over here for drug tests. He's like, hey, do y'all have drug tests? And he's like, yeah, we do. So he gets this box, and they put like three or four drug tests in the box. He's like, come on. So we get in the car, and he takes me to the women's facility. Now, right before I was leaving, right before I was leaving, the cop that had initiated my stop comes in again with a female a little bit younger than me pregnant and I just remember like that caught my attention like oh my god that's so sad she's pregnant you know so I noticed and I, another thing too I'm like dang like he's done went and got somebody else like this cop that initiated my stop now I'm in jail he's already went and got somebody else and this girl's pregnant so anyways we get to the women's facility and the woman that was working was new and she was having a difficult time there was someone in there already that she was uh putting into the system that she was booking and so when we walk in he um we don't go all the way into the office we just kind of go to the door and he's like he points to me and she's like okay and he hands her the box of drug tests so she gets the box like over the desk looks at it picks up the drug test and says i need a drug test her and points to me he looks back at me, looks at her, and says, no, nah, don't worry about it. And I'm like, yes, drug test me. You know what I'm saying? Um, so she's like, okay. And she just sits the box down by her desk. And she's like, well, after I book, finish booking this one in, I'll book her in. So can you sit her out there? And he's like, yeah, that's fine. So um, he sits me right outside uh, the little office or whatever. A few minutes later, she brings me in and she starts booking me. And, um, we brought my purse, but like my purse rode up front with him. And then everywhere that we got out, like he handed it to the lady, not to me. You know what I'm saying? But when I sat down to be booked, she set my purse kind of down beside me. Well, my phone started ringing and I looked down and, um, I asked her, can I, can I answer it? And she says, no, I said, it's probably my husband. He probably doesn't know where I am. Can I answer it? And she goes, no, turn it off. So I have to pick it up and I turn it off and I put it back in and uh, she takes my purse at this point and puts it into evidence. So, and um, anyways, um, she's booking me in. I'm signing paperwork and that's when I see all my charges. So my charges were improper lane usage, flight from an officer, and scheduled to schedule two drugs, which is cocaine. So I'm like, what is improper lane usage? And she says, um, that's where, no, this is, oh, this is, um, Christy, I'm telling the story that what happened in 2019, because I've never really talked about it in depth. So I said, what is improper lane usage? And, and where did that come in? Because I, I don't know nothing about this. And she says, oh, well, that's why they initiated the stop. Like, you're going around a curve, and you go over that yellow line or outside that white line, that's improper lane usage, and that's why you got pulled over. To that point, I didn't know why. I'm like, oh, okay. And I didn't know that they charged me with flight. Like, I had no idea. Like, I had no idea that they charged me with this improper lane usage. I never knew why they pulled me over. And I didn't know that they were going to charge me with flight because I told them. I'm like, I pulled over the second that I saw y'all. And, two, no, I didn't switch lanes. We live on... Back roads was most of it, and then from where I got on the highways where I was pulled over, they're not, it's only two lanes. We live, 
you know, only two lanes. So no, I didn't switch lanes. Um, so anyways, um, I see what all you guys are saying in the chat. <laughs> So, um, that's when it dawned on me, oh, that must be the, that must be why they're trying to say they pulled me over. They're going to try to say that I went over the line or something, but I'm pretty positive I didn't. To this, I do not think I went over that line at all. I mean, I'm driving on, this is my hometown. I don't think so at all. Um, thank you, T. T detox. It's been a while since I've seen you. I hope you're doing well. Yes, Kayla, I did. Um, so, uh, anyways, um, as I'm being booked in, that cop that initiated my stop brings in the pregnant girl, the younger pregnant girl. So I'm getting booked in and everything, and I ask him, I say, can I call my husband, please? And because I knew that that was Sean that had just called my phone. And it's been hours at this point, you know. And I said, can I, can I please call my husband? And they, she said, well, I'm running behind. So I'm going to book her next. And then I'll let you call your husband. And she was new, too. So it took a long time for her to book me in. And she couldn't get everything to go through right. So she, she had to call one of the ladies that normally works there, and she was like, hey, if you're not busy tonight, could, do you think you could come up here and help me? Because I'm kind of having some issues with some of the, uh, like, work in the system or whatever. So, she finished booking, she finishes booking me, and there's this big chart on the wall of, like, the sales and who's in each sale. And it's, like, booked up pretty much. So, she's, like, looking at it, and she's like, I don't know where I'm going to put you. We're booked up tonight like I just don't know where I'm gonna put you and um, when I'm booked in she finally takes me to one part of the jail most of the facility is the women's facility uh, from from what I think from what I, so when I walked past and there's like this long call with sales on each side from the way that it looked but she walked me into this um, like day room it was this big room that had a TV and some tables and a cell phone. And off the day room was three other sales, uh, see-through sales, just the bars, right? So there was this big day room, and in each corner of the day room were sales connected to it. Um, there was one person already in one of those sales, and she put me in another one. And as we were walking through, there was... Um, this, this person, there was this person sitting in the day room. I mean, just feet propped up, you know, like watching TV. And uh, when I walk in, it's like, tells the lady, hey, where are you putting her? And she says, I don't know. That's what I'm trying to figure out. And she like kind of looks me up and down. And the, the guard says, but I know where I'm not putting her. And the, the person says, where's that? And she says, I ain't putting her with you. And uh, the uh, the person says, why is that? And she goes, you know why. And they both start laughing. Now, this person was clearly gay. Um, she had a buzz cut, uh, had boxers, uh, and her, um, like, sweatpants was kind of pulled down where her boxers were shown. It was obvious that she was you know, um, it was, so I was like, oh my God, uh, oh my goodness, like, she's kind of hitting on me, this is weird, um, so that made me really uncomfortable as well, because I think, you know, you always hear these rumors, and I'm thinking, I'm gonna be in jail for, like, 10 days, so I'm like, I don't know, am I gonna be assaulted while in jail, like, I don't even know, you know what I'm saying, like, the second I get in here, I got, Somebody making comments and laughing, like, where are you putting her? Ha, 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 you know? Like, it was really, yes, yes. I think that's the term that they use in jail is she was a butch. I mean, I don't think that's a derogatory term, you guys. I think that's really what they call them. Um, so, anyways, she puts me in this cell that um, there's this big iron green bed. And there's a shower in it, but there's nothing to, like, 
there's like two walls to kind of close the shower off, but there's not a curtain or nothing. But it didn't matter because the um, shower didn't work. It was like old. And where the the shower head used to be, there's just an old, what used to be a white t-shirt stuck in it that's now like a brown dingy t-shirt with a rubber band tied around it. There's mold all over the walls. There's blood. There's boogers. There's, it's just the most disgusting thing I've ever been in, in my life. Oh, I love 60 Days In, Bossy. I love 60 Days In. I've actually talked to some of the people on 60 Days In. So, um, she puts me in there. And at first, this is December. It's cold. I've been crying. I've been on the side of the road for like four hours. I'm shaking. So, at first, I just sit down on that bed. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what my that's what my best friend goes by. I think she refers to herself as a stud, I think. Um, so, I sit down on this big iron bed. Um... And I'm sitting there, and I'm just, like, crying, and I look around, and I see hair, and I see boogers, and I see blood. And I am a, I'm OCD like crazy. So, I stand up, and I'm like, I'm not sitting on that. There's a sink, but the sink is disgusting. It's just, I love Tony. Tony was a hothead, though. I, I loved him, but he was a hothead. Um, he did it, though. Tony, Tony did the dang thing. So, I, I stand up, and I'm just like, oh, my God. And then I look up, and I see a camera. And then I'm like, I'm kind of embarrassed because, like, yeah, I've never been in jail, you know, and it's a scary thing. But I've been bawling my eyes out the whole time. So, then I'm kind of embarrassed that I've just been, like, bawling my eyes out. So, I turn my back to the camera because I'm like, I don't want to be on camera, like, bawling my eyes out. Um, then the guard, she brings me, like, um, the mattress. She brings me the mattress and the sheet, and I put the mattress on there, and I put the sheet on there, and of course, the sheet is not clean. It's not terribly dirty, but it's not clean. Um, I don't know. Most of my friends are gay, and uh, I've never heard of Butch being derogatory, but it, it may be in some places. Um, so, the, the sheet is not 100% clean. There's stains on it. And um, then the, the pregnant lady, she finishes booking the pregnant lady, and she brings the, the pregnant lady back, and she puts her in that other, that third cell. When she brings her in and books her in, she comes and gets me, and she tells me I can make a phone call. So I go out, and I call Sean, obviously, and I have to call him from the jail phone. I can't call him from my cell phone. So then I'm wondering, is he even going to answer? Because it's 10 o'clock at night at this point, and... He's not going to recognize the number, so, you know, I don't know. Um, so, I call, he answers, and he's like, hello, and I'm like, Sean, and he's like, where are you? And I'm like, I'm in jail, and he's like, what, why? And I said, I don't know, the cops pulled me over, I don't know why, they said I had cocaine on me, and he's like, what, cocaine? He's like, there isn't, any, you didn't have cocaine on you, there isn't even cocaine in this town, and I'm like, I don't know, you know, I don't know, but come get me, you know, please come get me. I'm like, do whatever you can to come get me. He's like, don't worry about it, baby. We're going to get you out. And I'm like, please call mama. He's like, I'm going to call your mama right now. We're going to figure this out. And I'm like, I think I may have told him that the judge wasn't going to, like the judge, what the judge wasn't there. I don't remember. But either way, I was told for a while the judge was going to be out until the 8th. So, um, uh, I'm talking to him for a few minutes and they're like, okay, that's it. That's it. I mean, I could, I was only allowed to talk to Sean for like two minutes max. So I'm like, just please come up, mama. My mom will know what to do. Um, get on top of this. You know, he's like, we're going to get you out. Don't worry, baby. So we got off the phone, and I'm like, by this point, the lady that booked me in, the other lady that normally works there is there helping her. Because remember I told you the, guy, the lady that booked me in is new, and she's having problems with the system. So when I go to make the phone call, the other lady that normally works there is there. And she was there in, like, her pajamas and stuff. So, um, I'm like, do y'all know when I'm going to be able to get out? Like, do you guys know when the quickest time is for a judge to set a bond? And finally, the lady that came in that normally works there says, well, the judge is out until the 8th. But Judge So-and-so in the neighboring parish is setting bonds for him, is working until our judge comes back. So, tomorrow is Sunday, and most judges won't set bonds on Sundays. So, it may be Monday. 
you know, and I'm like, okay, um, you do have to be arraigned within a certain period of time, I think. I was never arraigned. Um, so, anyways, um, they make me go back, back in the back, and I'm sitting there, and I'm sad, and um, they bring me my clothes. It's uh, an orange jumpsuit, and I was on my cycle. I was on my period, and um, I'm not big on wearing pads. Uh, so this is a little TMI, but I think it's important. It's important. So they bring me my clothes, and the underwear that they have is like the paper underwear. Not paper, but very, first off, they were big. Uh, maybe like this big. I don't know. They were big, and then they're very like stretchy, like hospital underwear. You know what I'm saying? So she brings me my clothes, and um, I, I'm strip searched. I have to take, you know, take off all my clothes and like squat and all of that. Um, and uh, I tell her like, hey, it's that time of the month for me. Do you have like tampons or anything? And she says, no, we don't carry tampons. Um, we have pads. Um, and I'm like, well, uh, okay, uh, can I have a pad? And she's like, yeah, but then the underwear was like so big that they fell off of me. Like the, I, the underwear was, yeah, they're like mesh. The underwear was like too big. So, um, thankfully I was not heavy on my period. Um, I just like, I think I just used toilet paper, I think. Um, yes. So yes, I had to, they stripped me. If they didn't strip me, I took my clothes off. And um, I had to squat. You know, you squat and cough to make sure there's, like, nothing up in your uh, prison pocket. Uh, so, anyways. So, um, I remember, like, I got dressed, but, I like, I was like, the underwear's too big. Can you see if there's, like, some other, um, I'm not big on wearing pants. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, so I remember saying like these underwear are too big. Do you guys have any, this any smaller? And I remember she called the, the, um, the, um, the stud over, you know, the, the person that was sitting in the day room watching TV. She called the stud over and was like, Hey, can you go back to the such and such room and see if we got any smaller underwear for her? These are too big for her. And she was like, okay, yeah, sure. No problem. Um, and she goes and comes back she's like that's all we have um this stud person must have been like a trustee you know obviously because she was kind of doing whatever um so anyways yeah uh I, they gave me my clothes and gave me like toothbrush shampoo and conditioner i want to say maybe i don't really remember but definitely toothbrush and toothpaste little like nothing toothbrush and little cup a little styrofoam cup but the faucet was so gross, I didn't even want to use water out of it. And it was connected to the toilet. Like, I know most piping is, but this was, like, right on the toilet. And I just couldn't. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I dry brushed my teeth uh, the next morning, that night, the next morning. Because I was like, no, I'm not using no water from here. Um, but anyways, that night, I did talk to, hey, Wildflower, I emailed you. That night, I did talk to the pregnant lady, and she told me her story. And her story was wild as well. Like, her story, very questionable as well. Um, I'll, I'll go over that later if you guys want me to. But her story was like, what? You, what? You got arrested for that? When you have permission to go get your stuff from the house you used to live in? And the boyfriend that lives there even showed up and said, y'all have permission, but the cops still arrested you? The cop that arrested me arrested you? Hmm. Um, but anyways... We talked, we kind of, you know, made friends or whatever. I still have her on my Facebook to this day. Um, but yeah, so I, uh, that night, it was it was like 10 o'clock, you know, when I got in there. Um, I laid with my back to the camera and I cried a lot. And I remember hearing the train go by. And so the jail that I was at is only like three blocks from my house. And... It was tough because I would hear the train and I knew that my kids back home was probably here in the train. I don't spend time away from my family. Like when I went to Arkansas the other day for the Josh Duggar trial, that's like the first time I've spent days away from my family. 
So I was like, what is Sean telling my kids? I know they're wondering where their mom is. Like, do they hear the train? I hear the train. It was really, it made me cry worse to hear the train. Very strange. But anyways, the next morning, um, they come in there and they give you breakfast. And uh, it was freaking bread and sausage that was uh, eggs that was uh, and um i don't remember what else they just gave you water or no they didn't give you water a styrofoam cup with a package of powdered orange juice and you were to use the faucet in your in your dorm your room in your cell to fill your cup up and pour that powder orange juice in there and that was your drink right so i was like no way i think i just ate the bread i think um but when they came in to bring the breakfast i was like can i call my mom or my husband to see if they've spoke to the judge to get a bond set and she said no that's not how it works what happens is is once the judge sets your bond uh they will call us and say that a bond has been set and then we will let you call someone to come get you so I'm like, well, when will I be able to call my husband again? And she said, you won't. You won't be able to call your husband until a bond has set. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Like, I'm not going to be able to. So if a bond doesn't get set until the 8th, I can't call my husband? Like, are you freaking kidding me? So um, I was devastated again. I'm thinking, oh, my God, this is tough. Like, I, I'm. this is really tough to go hours upon hours without talking to my husband. You know what I'm saying? Like, we we're always together um so i'm like i don't even know when the next time i'm going to be able to talk to him i can't call and check in just to see what he knows like hey have you talked to my mom has my mom figured something out you know what i'm saying nothing well about an hour or so later maybe around 7 30 or 8 the the pregnant lady that was with me they came in there and said a bond has been set you need to call somebody to come get you because a bond has been set so I'm like, oh my goodness, great, great. Obviously, there's a judge setting bonds. So she goes out, comes back in, and I'm like, or when they tell her that, I'm like, do you know if the judge has set my bond yet? They're like, no, the, the only one that we got the call for was her, not you. So I'm like, great, that's awesome. So when she comes back from calling her people to come get her, um, she said, well, I just called my mom to come get me. And she said, the way I got my bond set is because my mom called the judge. My mom called the judge and had them set a bond. So she's like, I don't know how, but you need to figure out a way to have your mom or somebody call the judge for you, you know, because my mom called the judge. So um, when she was getting ready to leave, she didn't have a pen or paper or anything, but she rem she memorized my husband's number. I said, when you get out, can you please call my husband and tell him that you were in here with me and the way that, Sean, why are you not a moder moderator? The way that you got, um, the way that you got your bond set was that your mom called the judge. Call my husband and tell him that. That way he can do whatever he needs to be done to get a bond set. So she said, okay. So I literally had her memorize my husband's number that way, when she got out, she could call my husband. Um, so, thankfully, it wasn't long after that. They came in and they told me, okay, you got a bond set. Your mom is, uh, or you got a bond set. You need to go call somebody to come get you. So, I went and I called Sean. And he's like, hey, we know your mom's working on it. She's going to come get you. I'm going to stay with the kids. And I'm like, okay, uh, great. So, um, it was about two hours probably after a bond was set that my mom was able to get there and get me my bond was five thousand dollars never been arrested never been in no type of trouble ever 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 and what happened was so my brother was married to the lady that worked for um the judge on the other parish right my brother is no longer married to her but they have a child he was married to her for a few years so when I got arrested that night, when I when I called Sean, Sean hurried up and called my mom. My mom was like asleep because she gets up, she works uh, early in the morning, and um, which she don't work she don't work on weekends, but she still goes to bed early because she wakes up every morning at like four to go to work, you know. 
So Sean called my mom at like 10.30 that night and was like, we got a problem. Nanette's in jail and this is why. And my mom was like, oh my God, let me see what we can do. So my mom immediately contacted my brother's ex-wife because um, I told Sean, I said, the judge here is on vacation. I think, it, I think yeah, I was on the phone with Sean when they told me that it was our neighboring judge that was set my bond. So um, he was able to relay that message back to my mom, and that's how my mom knew to contact um, my brother's ex-wife. So um, yes, she did end up calling Sean, right? Sean didn't didn't she call you? I think she did. Um, so um, my mom contacted my brother's ex-wife, messaged her, and said, "Hey, I need to talk to you ASAP." <laughs> And his ex-wife messaged back and said, his ex-wife suspected that it was him. Like, what do you do now? You know? And she was like, um, no, Net Net's in jail, which is my nickname. And she was like, what? Because that's so unexpected. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, what? Net Net? No way. What happened? And, um, and she was like, well, this is what they're saying. And she was like, oh, no. Yeah, that's no way, right? And, she told my mom, she said, this is his home number. Call him at home. Um, it happens. Sometimes people call him at home. Just call him at home. So my mom called the judge uh, either Saturday night or early Sunday morning at his residence and got him to set me a bond. But this is what the judge said. So the, I think she called that night and he said, okay, I'll get her case in the morning. So the next morning he got my case. Flight from an improper lane usage, flight from an officer, and schedule two cocaine. No, no record of any kind. Um, and he he asked my mom. He says, "Does your daughter have a substance abuse problem?" And my mom says, "No, she doesn't." And he says, "Does her husband have a substance abuse problem?" And my mom says, "No, he doesn't." And um, he he says, "Is there anybody that lives in that household that has a substance abuse problem that would have drugs in the car?" And my mom says, no, nobody, like, no, n nobody lives in that house besides her and her husband and their kids, and they don't have a problem with drugs. Like, we don't know how this happened. You know, we don't know what's going on. And he said, well, somebody in that house has an issue with drugs, and you need to get to the bottom of it. That's what this judge told my mom. Somebody in that house has a substance, substance abuse problem, and you need to get to the bottom of it. Sean didn't answer because he didn't know the number, <laughs> which is what I was scared would happen with me. Um, so, which I thought, wow, this is a judge. Innocent until proven guilty, right? Innocent until proven guilty. That's what a judge is supposed to believe. And here he is telling my mom that somebody in your family has an issue with drugs. Yeah, that's like crossing the line, like when you're going around a curve, or just like crossing the line in general, I guess. But that's what they told me, like, oh, going around a curve, cross the line. Um, so, it was December 28th, 2019. So, anyways, um, we did, Sean didn't even have access to any of our money. I have both bank cards somehow. It happens. Um, I have both bank cards. I had, uh, and it was the weekend. It was a Sunday. So, thankfully, my mom had the money to come and pay to bond me out. And we, obviously, we paid her back. Um, but we didn't even have a way to access our funds at the time because it was Sunday. Um, I know. I know. No criminal record. But, yes, he told my mom that somebody in my house has an issue. So, my mom shows up to pick me up. And they give me my stuff, my phone, my purse. And I noticed... The medicine that they threw this big fit about, the Ondestron, the Zovaran, was not in my purse. So I asked the lady as I'm signing my paperwork, I'm like, well, where is where is uh, the Zovaran that was in my purse? I don't take it like that, but I love to have it on hand because Zovaran is the best medication for nausea. I have a lot of kids. My son has um, like acid reflux, Caden does, and... Um, that's really good for him when he gets nauseous. Um, so, of course, I wanted my medicine back. And I was wondering, why isn't my medicine in my purse? You know what I'm saying? So, I'm like, so where's, where's the medicine that was in my purse? She's like, I don't know. This is all they turned in. 
So after we, I get released and everything, they set a date. They set a court date. It was like February something. I don't, I still don't know if our, our small town takes, um, I still don't know if our small town will take a, a credit card. I don't know. Possibly. Hey, 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 hey. So, um, anyways, uh, I get released. I'm like, where, so where's the medicine that was in my purse? And they're like, we don't know. This is all the cops turned in. She's like, go downstairs, ask them. So we go downstairs and I'm like, so I got all my stuff, but I have medicine in my purse. Where is it? I don't know. We don't have it. So they have to call the cop that brought me in. The cop that brings me in, they call him and he says, um, he says, oh, it's still in my car. I'll, I'll be working again tonight. I go on at about 630. So I'll just run it by her house. Mind you, at this point, I'm scared of these cops. No, no, I don't know. My kids actually have prescription of this. This was my prescription, but like right now, I have a prescription for my son. He gets um, he gets Zovaran, and there's maybe prescription Pepsi because he has um, he has acid reflux really bad, and it really affects him in the mornings. So my son gets up every morning, like mon well Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for football. He has to be at football at six forty five, and it affects him worse in the morning. So, like, no, he has a prescription as well, but so do I. I love Zovaran. It's like the best thing for nausea. But you don't take it every day. You only take it when you need it. You know what I'm saying? So, any, anyways, the cop is like, she calls the cop. He's like, well, I, I work again this evening, and I have the medicine in my, in my car, in my cop car. I'll run it by our house when I come on this evening. And I'm like, well, that's BS because I don't want them cops in my house after pulling guns on me last night, you know. Um, so anyways, my mom brings me home. And I remember I just come home and I go to my bathroom and I just sat down and I cried. Uh, I just cried uh, because I was like just devastated about everything that was going on. Um, I was dealing with a lot with my channel. Uh you know, we had just lost our nephew. Um, and it was a lot, you know what I'm saying? And then I was like, I'm gonna I, I knew I was gonna beat this. I knew I was gonna beat it. I knew I wasn't guilty. I knew I didn't have drugs in my car. I knew I didn't run from the cops. I was like, there's no way this can go down like this. Like there's just no way because I I didn't do these things. So, um, I have Zegron with me. I get nauseous. So if you're driving home from the pharmacy with medication, you can get put in jail. That's crazy. That's wild. Um, I got locked down December 15th. Did you, David? Did you tell me that? I don't remember if you told me that. Um, so um, I come home, and yeah, I remember walking into my bathroom and just sitting on my, like the, the side of my bathtub, and I just broke down, and I cried. And I didn't know what to do you know I, I didn't know because I'm very close with a lot of people on YouTube uh, my moderators have become my bestest friends uh, I have people that I talk to that I'm really close with they never told me why they pulled me over Lindsay I was never they never said well this is the reason that we're pulling you over never I found out that it because uh, improper lane usage so um, Obviously, after I got myself together, I went and I talked to my kids. My kids were like, what happened, Mom? Uh, and I had to explain to them. I, I was in jail last night. You know what I'm saying? And they're like, why? Like, what do you mean? So I, I explained it to them. My kids were also on their Christmas break from school. We live in a small town where anything that happens, everybody knows, really, like, it doesn't take long for, you know, word to spread. And we live in a very uppity up little town um, where, like, something like this will be a huge embarrassment for your kids when they go back to school. You know what I'm saying? A huge embarrassment. And um, it was. Every, 
from the time, I, anytime I walked out of my house for months after that, I remember the first time I went to my kid's school after that, just feeling like everybody was looking at me like she got arrested over the, over the Christmas break. She got arrested. She was running from the cops and she had cocaine because that's what they, that, that's what I was accused of running from the police because I had cocaine. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I just felt like everywhere I went, people knew and they were like whispering and it, it was, um, my, I have two kids in high school, you know, um, so it was devastating. Uh, I talked to my kids. I told my kids, I said, listen, this is what's going on. But I, I, you guys know I don't do drugs. I mean, one of my kids was like, what drugs? Why would they think that? Like, you don't do drugs, mama. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, I know I don't, but um, that didn't stop them from arresting me for that, for that you know. Uh, so I told, you know, my older kids, if you go to school and someone says something about this, you can shrug it off, ignore it, or just tell them tell him that we're fighting this and it's not the way that it looks, right? Um, I made the decision that I was going to handle this privately. I was not going to go on my channel and talk about it. I knew that I couldn't because I knew I was going to fight this. I knew I was going to do whatever I needed to do to fight what just happened. And if I was fighting it, that meant I couldn't be on YouTube talking about it. You know, if you're planning on fighting charges, you don't need to be on YouTube giving details of everything that happened. You know what I'm saying? So, um, my plan was, and as much as I loved my moderators and I trusted them with everything in me, I trusted them. I made the decision I wasn't going to say anything about my arrest to anyone outside of my family. Um, until we got this handled, until we got the charges dropped, and whatever we decided to do after that. So, that's what I did. I was like, I'm just not going to tell anybody. And, um, I already had a lot going on, you know, with the YouTube situation. So, um, I didn't tell my mods, and I spoke to several of them, you know, and I didn't say anything. And it was really difficult, because I almost felt, I felt wrong. To talk to my mods and I just had this huge thing going on in my life and I wasn't telling them but I was just terrified that the word would get out and I would look a certain way and I wouldn't be able to prove myself because I, I knew I wasn't gonna be able to prove myself so I didn't say anything and um, that Monday morning uh, Katie Joy from Without a Crystal Ball somehow found out. I heard that she found out Sunday. I heard that Katie went in Uni Rock's Discord on Sunday and announced my arrest and wanted Uni Rock to go live and talk about it. And Uni Rock was like, well, do you have any proof? Do you have a mugshot? Do you have a report or anything? And Katie said, well, no, I don't have anything because nothing's been put out yet, but I have a really good source. And Uni Rock said, I am not going to go live and announced that LB got arrested without any proof. Nobody's gonna believe us. And so he didn't, and Katie didn't say anything until that Monday. That's what I was told by someone in Uni Rock's Discord. It would be nice if Uni Rock would come, you know, would tell me if she did know it on Sunday, because I think that matters a lot if Katie knew Sunday versus Monday. And the reason why is because Katie blew it up on Monday. They said it was cocaine. They said I had cocaine in my car. Um, so that Monday morning at around 10 a.m., Katie started blasting it all over the place that I was arrested, that I was arrested for running from the police and I was the, and that I had uh, cocaine on me. And then she started going live. That explains her, you know, uh, erratic behavior that explains all these late night live streams because she's on drugs like that, that, that explains it and then people in the chat are like oh my gosh yes no wonder why she goes live late at night no I go live late at night because that's when my kids are asleep <laughs> you know um, that's when it's easier for me to stream not because not because um, I do drugs um, so yes after Katie blasted it to the masses, and I couldn't say anything, like, yeah, without a crystal ball. Um, 
so after she went live and I, I knew I wasn't really supposed to talk about it because I knew I was going to fight this, but I went and made a community post. And on my community post, I was like, yes, it's true. I was arrested, but I'm fighting these charges. So I can't say a lot, but I want you guys to know it's not the way that it seems. I'm innocent. I didn't do anything. I did not have drugs in my car. I was not running from the police. I swear, I swear, excuse me. It's not the way that it seems. And I'm going to be, I'm going to prove this to you guys as soon as I can. But right now I can't really say too much, you know. Um, yeah, all of this over sidewalk talk, right? So wild. Um, yes, Slanky. Some people do. A lot of the cops do. Um, so... Yes, kids chalk. Do not keep, if you have white chalk, do not keep white chalk in your car. I don't even know if I would suggest blue chalk or any kind of chalk, to be honest. And the reason why is because I saw um, this story about a woman that had blue cotton candy in her car in the bag. It was in a cotton candy bag. And they tested it and said that it was positive for cocaine. Or meth. I think meth. Best mates. Um, what does it say? Is the cops know what to make? Fiction, they can reverse engineer and write the narrative even false court strive for 99 yeah i believe that I, 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 yeah i agree with that um so there were so many things said about me i made that post thinking people know me like they they know me come on like nobody's gonna believe that i do drugs like i'm on here i'm always transparent with you guys like surely nobody's gonna it, like i get it it's hard not to believe if I saw that a YouTuber was arrested for flight, <laughs> running from the cops, that's the way that it appears, right? And Schedule 2, obviously, as much as I wouldn't want to believe it, I would have to question, like, well, why did she run if she didn't have drugs in her car, right? So, I made this post on my community tab about it's not the way that it looks. You guys, it doesn't really make sense, but I'm fighting this. I can't really talk about it too much. la di da di da And then I made a post on my private Facebook account. Because my local radio station, they post arrest over the weekend. Anybody that's arrested over the weekend, Monday morning, they will post the arrest. So it was posted, you know. So on my private personal Facebook account, I made a post, you know, saying that it is a shame that they can arrest someone and charge them with drugs without 100% proof that it is drugs. Because they still have to send this stuff off to the lab to prove that it's drugs. So it's it's sad that they are ruining people's lives without knowing for sure that this person has drugs. You know what I'm saying? So I made this post. Like, it, it's sad that they can do this. Like, I assure you guys, I don't do drugs. I've never done drugs. Um, I was always scared of drugs. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, um... And it's just sad. They should be able to do that. They should not be able to take these $2, $2 roadside test kits and ruin someone's life with them. They're not even accurate. They have an accuracy rate of like 40%. Um, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, the they can absolutely be wrong. And... There's so many stories online of them being wrong. There was this one man and woman. This woman wanted to get pregnant, so she was taking folic acid pills. Um, she took them at home, and then she would take them uh, while at work on her lunch. So she put a bunch of folic acid pills in a Ziploc bag and put them in her purse. That way, when she was on her lunch at work, she could take it at, at work. Her and her man got pulled out over on the weekend. They said that all of those pills were ecstasy, and they tested them. In the little two dollar test kit guess what positive for ecstasy they both got arrested they didn't have the money for their bond because their bond was so much she got fired from her job he got fired from his job and he was an immigrant who missed his swearing in to be uh, to become a legal citizen of the united states he was about to become a legal citizen of the united states he was going to be sworn in to be a legal citizen he was in jail when he got out of jail when they got out, it was when the test kit, when they sent that, um, when they sent the, the drugs to the lab and the lab 
finally responded and said, no, this is what it is. It actually is folic acid. It actually is what the people said that it is. Then they finally let them out of jail. The lady with the cotton candy, six months in jail. Her bond was a million dollars. Her bond was one million dollars, six months in jail, cotton candy. That's on video. You can actually look that up on YouTube. It's on YouTube. She gets pulled over, her and her man, they're, they're blown away when they say that this is, they're like, no, nope, test positive for math. And she's like, what? Math? She had never been in trouble before. Her bond was a million dollars. Thank you so much for the super sticker. Thank you. Um, when she was in jail, one of her daughters gave birth to twins. She missed it. Another one of her daughters had a miscarriage, was in the hospital. Missed it. Couldn't be there. Couldn't be there because of these roadside test kits. Um, there are so many stories. There was this one man. He worked for the church. He volunteered for um, kids that were going through a lot. Um, every morning, he would go to Dunkin' Donut and get a donut. And um, he got pulled over one day. And the crust from the donut, the, the, um, the glaze on the donut, some was down on his floorboard. They tested that, said that it was like some, some type of drug. I don't even remember. He went to jail. No, Nobody believed him, you know, because they claimed that it tested it and it was positive for XYZ. So um, he lost his job. Uh, law student, there was a law student, the same thing happened. Lost their, you know, get, there, there's people losing their jobs, um, losing their houses, um, all kind of things over these $2 test kits. There's some states that don't use them at all. They don't use them at all because they only have a 40% chance of being right. There's some states that use them, but they do not make an arrest based off these kits. What they do is when you uh, when they test it, if it's a positive, they write you a ticket with a court date. That way, by the time you come to court, they've sent it off to the lab and they've gotten that result back and they can tell for sure if it was in fact drugs. They don't arrest. Our town, they arrest you. So anyways, um, me, and KJ, no, me and KJ do not live in the same town. We live far apart. Um, you guys will look this stuff up. There are so many stories about people losing their jobs, uh, losing their homes, uh, you know, so any, any support that they have within the, uh, within the community because they work within the community, uh, because these $2, two dollar test kits, two, these test kits cost $2. There is this huge story, uh, I think that it was like um, NBC covered, of them testing the, what they did, NBC, they covered this story of this scientist in a science lab, opened them, would open a test kit, put chocolate in it, close it up, shake it, positive for marijuana, put uh, sugar in it, positive for cocaine, put, I mean, literally, in a, in a lab, a scientist did this, tested these test kit, these test kits. Uh, you can find it online, I'll have to find it and link it, but it, it, it's crazy, it's crazy. So anyways, um, my first court date was supposed to be in February, like February 20th or something along those lines. I don't exactly remember. Um, but the messed up part is having it all left out. I was literally reading some of the comments. I actually want to find some. I'm going to go back and find them. I'm going to go back and read some of them. Okay, so Katie announces my arrest. This is December 31st, 2019. So um, she announced my arrest, let's see, 28th, yeah, on the 30th. On December 30th, she announced my arrest. So um, someone, I'm not going to name names, but someone says, explains why she hasn't been on. I knew she did drugs. All you have to do is look at her pupils. I don't know if people know this. But when you're on YouTube, nine times out of 10, you have a light shining in your eyes. I have a light here, a light there, two lights up there. It affects your pupils most of the time. 
Someone else says, I can't get it out of my head, her repeating over and over that she has no bad habits. Wow. That's all I can say is wow. Someone else said, yep, that's exactly what, what she said on a live. And then tweets as she made fun of Uni. I, I think I made fun of Uni about his Red Bulls because he was picking on me a lot. There's no way they have probable cause to take you to jail or search your car. You have a lawsuit to sue them. We have did that, Jane. That's why I'm talking about this now um, because we went through all of that. Someone else said uh, the best thing for everyone would be for LB to just come clean. Then her and KJ could move on. <laughs> Someone else said it's, it's against the law to give out prescription drugs or take them. So throw that out. Oh, because someone said, well, she just lost her nephew. Maybe someone gave her something for, like, anxiety. Uh, someone did try. There were people that defended me. Um, what is this woman nagging about? Are you talking about me? Because if you tell me my channel, what am I nagging? I don't know. Um, so, anyways, someone actually defended me saying, well, she just lost her nephew. You know, maybe someone gave her uh, something for anxiety, which... I wouldn't have took anything for anxiety, but that was a plausible explanation. You know, well, she just lost her nephew. Maybe somebody gave her something and it was in her car or something like that. And uh, someone said, it's against the law to give out prescription drugs or take them. So throw that out. Because again, she's breaking the law knowingly. If she had a headache, take a couple, 500, take a couple or more Tylenol, you won't die. Bad analogy. She's a fake and a fraud. And then uh, here's where KJ confirmed by blank, blank, sheriff, and blank, blank. LB arrested on flight from an officer in possession of Schedule Two narcotic. Someone said, I have a thought. What if everyone just let this go? Let this family grieve and deal with their choices and what may come. Let's let, let Katie's channel go back to commentary and discussion. For 2020, just a fresh start. Someone else said, it's funny how Katie has been asking for months and no one would let her be. But as soon as the tables are turned, let's all just drop it. Ha ha. I hate to, I hate to something drama, but you find it hilarious that everyone else believes they just, I don't know what that person was trying to say. We all believe in karma. Well, if one believed in karma or more poetic justice, I don't know. I hate to kick, I hate to kick a person when they're down. But these people have done so much to you, to Katie. This person was saying I've done so much to Katie when literally Katie had been going on and on and on about me and I wasn't even on the internet at this time. Um, hold on. Let me, let me find the rest of them. Where did that go? I mean, you guys, the comments, I didn't even look at these for the longest because I knew I wouldn't be able to handle it. Like after going through all the drama that I went through, um, I did, um, I blocked them. After going through all the drama that I had went through, losing my nephew, the arrest, there was no way that I could read these comments. So I didn't. I didn't get on YouTube for a long time, or I didn't get on anywhere for a long time. I told people because people was telling me about it, and I knew that I was going to move forward, you know, legally. So I did tell people anything that you have, email it to me. Anything where you see people talking about me, talking about my arrest, email it to me. I, I didn't look at it then, but thankfully I was able to use it all later. Someone said, Leslie just lost her nephew. Have you ever lost a child close to you for F? It's F. It's F up big time. Um, but KJ and friends are running with it. LB didn't bully KJ. How I saw it, KJ started this crap on IG and Leslie, LB just responded to it. Most never saw KJ's lives. KJ's IG lives because she never uplo uploads them. She's vile. And someone said she never bullied KJ. She made a three-hour rant video talking crap about KJ and her child and her drinking. Give me a break, which that was actually a lie. And this person used to come for me all the time. I actually, my videos, my live streams are always long. And I can talk about one thing and then go off onto another thing. I never talked about her child 
I've never talked about her child in a negative light, ever, ever, ever. And yes, I did bring up the fact that Katie says she doesn't drink while she's on streams drinking. I don't care if she drinks. Katie's strong, grown. She can drink all she wants to. I don't care. Just don't say you don't drink and then drink. You know what I'm saying? So I had, there was a live stream that I went on to respond to things that Katie had said about me. And in that, the, I think the stream was three hours, but it wasn't all about her. And I did point out that Katie literally got on the stream, said she doesn't drink, and that's why her neighbors don't like her because her neighbors are drinkers and she doesn't drink and she's on live streams drinking. Right, I didn't say anything for a while about her. I literally, for a long time, just kept my mouth shut, shut and she said whatever the heck she wanted to. Um, there's so much, you guys. There's so much. Um, people, like, bashing me. And then, let's see. There was Instagram lives that were made over and over and over about me being arrested. Uni did a lot of live streams. Katie did a lot of live streams. Um, never saying, you know, these are the charges. Who knows? You're innocent until proven guilty. Um, it was just, this explains her behavior. She's a drug addict, you know? Leslie has fallen off her pedestal for being perfect. I never proclaim to be perfect. I know I'm not perfect. There's so much, you guys. I literally had to send my lawyer so many emails to give her all of this. If you, <laughs> if you commented, on any video about me being arrested, if you comment on Twitter, even if it was a good comment, <laughs> my lawyer saw it. Everything that I could find went to my lawyer um, just to prove how much this, this affected my channel. So anyways, my first court date was like December something, I mean, February something 2020. But because of COVID, COVID started kind of making its way. It got pushed back to like March something. I think it was like March so the, I think the first court date was March 20 something. I mean, for, I'm getting mixed up. So my first initial court date when I was, um, thank you. I love you too. It's just me. My first initial court date when I was leaving the jail and they said, this is your court date. It was like February 20th or something. And, um, I got, a, I got an email saying, I mean, I got a letter saying that court date was being pushed back because COVID. Now, when I got home that Monday, I started calling um, the district attorney's office. And I was like, listen, this is what happened to me. I don't even know why I got pulled over. From my understanding, they said XYZ, but nobody ever told me why I got pulled over. I need the DA to review the dash cam. Check it out because I was, I didn't do anything wrong to be pulled over. Um, and what they found in my car was not drugs. I asked the lady at the district attorney's office, I said, what's going to happen? She said, well, that um, test kit, they're going to send that off to, to the city, to a lab, and they're going to test it. And I asked, how long is that going to take? Yeah, we had COVID December 2019, but nobody knew. We didn't know what it was. We were just all sick. Me, my husband, and all of our kids got sick. So um, I asked the at the uh, DA's office, I said, how long is it going to take? You know, once they send it off, how long is it going to take before we get it back? And she said, it will take about a week or so. Once they send it, it'll take about a week before we get it back. I said, okay. I said, all right. So I started calling around to talk to different um, lawyers about, you know, what, what we're going to do with this. Um, I spoke to a, fa a family member that's a cop. I told him about the cocaine test kit and how it looked he was like yeah no that's not a positive uh see you later he said that's not a positive uh you should never got arrested for a result that looked like that because all the 
the liquid in that pouch should have been blue or pink. It's not specs. Specs is not a positive result. Um, I asked him if he could po possibly review the dash cam and see what he thought. And he was like, they're probably not going to let me do that, but I'll see what I could do. I spoke to a lawyer about this and, and he told me the steps we would need to take, how much everything was going to cost, blah, 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 blah. I was not going to trust a public, a public pretender. Exactly. That's why I was not going to trust a public pretender. Um, Sean actually wanted to. Sean was like, you know, I, I think, it, I think Sean was like, we can get a public defender. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not getting a public defender. They have no reason, um, to try to prove my case for me. I don't trust it. Oh, she was so smug when talking about my arrest. And the thing is, is my nephew had passed away just three weeks early. Earlier, anybody that was bashing me during that time, after everything that I went through, just ridiculous. Um, so, anyways, I would call to the district attorney's office like once a week almost to see if they had got that, the lab results back. And in the meantime, so that Monday, not only did I make my first phone call to a lawyer's office, to the district attorney's office, but I also called, um, what's it called? They're, they're all over the place. They are drug test places where you can get your hair follicle drug test. You can do a, a your analysis, blood work. You can do um, any labs. I think that's what it's called, any labs. Yeah, any labs. So that Monday, I also called any labs. And I was like, this is what happened to me. I need to get in to pay for a um, hair follicle test. I was told, you know, you could do your analysis test, but those only go back like a few days. You could do a nail test, like your fingernail, um, but those only go back like six months. The best way to get a drug test that goes back as far as possible is get a hair follicle test. So I had to make an appointment, and the first appointment they could get me, I think it was like on January 8th. It was like a week out, right? Thank you. Thank you so much. Anybody that was wrongfully arrested, I want you guys, if you guys want me to tell your story, email me because I have another channel and that's what we're going to start doing. We're going to use that other channel to start telling people stories about being wrongfully arrested or anything like that. So anyways, um, yeah, so that Monday morning, I'm making all these calls. I'm trying to do all these things. And that's when the crap hits the fan and it's all over the internet. Katie's posted it on her Twitter. She's posted it on her Instagram. Uni's going live. Katie's going live. And other YouTubers are recording Katie's lives of talking about me and then putting them on their channel. So it's kind of, you know, it's not just like, in, it's just kind of spreading like wildfire. And then my mods are like, you got arrested? And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I didn't tell y'all. Like, I wanted to. I just didn't really... I struggled. I decided I just kind of was going to keep it to myself. I'm so sorry. Like, then I felt bad that I kept it from them because I really do fit. I mean, I trust my mods with everything in me. Granted, at the time, there were a few that probably would have went and told someone. <laughs> um, but most of them not. Um, yes, email me because we're gonna, I, that's what we're going to do with the other channel. We're going to start telling people stories. So, um, anyways, it's all over the place, you know, every time I open up YouTube, uh, it's something about LB getting arrested, you know. Uh, my other channel, yeah, I'll, I'll get the link in just a little bit and I'll post it in here and I'll also put it in the description box below. Right now that channel's kind of dead, we don't do anything with it, but we're going to start doing something with it here in the next few months. So, um, thank you, Joe. We go up there. Hmm, something just glitched. So we go up there. It's in the city. It takes about an hour and a half to get up there. Takes an, about an hour and a half to get up there. We get up there. And I actually told myself, you know what? I'm going to go live on Instagram when I'm getting a hair follicle test. That way, it's proof that I'm getting this hair follicle test. But my daughter at the time, she was kind of getting restless. We had been in the waiting room for a minute, and then we finally got out the, in, 
in the room with the lady that did, did the hair follicle test. Um, she was really getting restless, so I actually gave my daughter, my little daughter, my phone to kind of watch YouTube or something, you know, to just kind of play to keep her occupied. Then the later, the lady brought me into the chair and she asked me, she said, are you doing this for uh, court? Is this like mandated? Are you doing this for a job or just personal use? And I said, just personal use. Um, because it wasn't ordered by a judge to take it. So when you go to any labs, if you're ordered by a judge to do this, you tell them, I'm ordered by a judge. You have to give them your ID. They verify that it's you. It's not just, you're not going up there saying, hey, my name is LB. I need a hair follicle test. And then your daughter slides in your place to get it done. Doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? Um, but I was actually accused of that. So anyways, um, by the time they started doing my hair, my little daughter was using my phone. So I was like, it's okay. I'm not going to go live and post it. On, you know, whatever. It'll be all right. I'm going to have paperwork to prove it anyways. Like, it's fine. So I remember they literally, I actually still have a uh, hair that's kind of shorter in the back from, um, they cut hair all, out from all over my head, different places all over my head. Um, so anyways, Katie went on a live stream and she read my community post where I said, you guys, I promise I'm not guilty. Like I was not running from the cops. I don't do drugs. I didn't have drugs on me. Like I swear to you guys, uh, when I can talk about this, I will. And everybody's going to wonder how this happened. Cause it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense how this happened. So Katie goes on IG live and she reads that. And she also reads my Facebook post that was on my private Facebook account where I basically said the same thing and I said in my post same thing it was like I don't know how this happened you guys um I, I don't do drugs and, e and I said even if I did do drugs I would never leave drugs in my car like in the glove box where the kids could so easily get to it right and as Katie's reading that she's like oh looks like someone doesn't want CPS knocking on their door it looks like someone's uh, scared of CPS. No, they don't just pull a few of your hairs out. No, they cut your hair in like six different spots all over your head. And I asked them, I said, what do you do if someone like bleaches their hair or like shaves their hair? They're like, we can get hair from anywhere. Underarm, leg, like if they need it, if a judge orders it and somebody comes in there and they've done shaved their head, they'll get your pubes if they have to. <laughs> um, so anyways, I asked the lady, I said, you know, how far back do you think it's going to go? And my hair then was longer. And she said, as long as your hair is, it could go back like a year or so probably. And I'm like, great. That's what we need. That's what we need. Like as far back as possible, that's what I want. So she also was like, oh, so when I made that post, one of my good friends made a comment because I was like, I don't know how this happened. It doesn't make sense. When I'm able to tell you guys about my story and about my arrest, you guys also will, will wonder, how did this happen? You know, and um, my my best friend <laughs> commented and said, it's probably that YouTuber that's always giving you trouble. Like, it's probably her. She probably did this, you know. I didn't say it. My friend said it. I didn't even know my friend said it for like some time later because when I made that post, I had a lot of people commenting on it. So I actually turned the notifications off because I was getting so many notifications. Um, so, but when I did see that my friend said that, I think I actually deleted it because I was like, oh God, I don't want that to cause problems. But it didn't matter. Katie already somehow had seen my private Facebook account and saw this post and saw what my friend said. So yeah, Katie goes live and she has a screenshot of my post on my Facebook account. She reads it and she's like, looks like, looks like LB's trying to say that someone set her up. And then she goes, Oh, yep, she's trying to say that I set her up. And I'm like, I never said you set me up. I never said that Katie set me up. What I did say was it didn't make sense. I didn't do anything wrong. And when I was able to share with you guys what happened, that even y'all would be like, what? How did this happen? It makes no sense. And that's the honest to God truth. Everyone that I've ever shared, shared my story with, everybody has been like, what? That doesn't make any sense. How did that happen? You know? Um, oh, thank you, Zen. Hey, hey, from UK. Um, I thought you were calling me a hoe from UK. I'm like, no, I'm from LA. <laughs> um, yes, I did, Deborah. 
They love to arrest people, strangers, anybody really. Um, so she then all of her little all of her little subscribers was like, oh my God, LB thinks that Katie drove from Minnesota to Louisiana and put drugs in her car. Ha 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 ha. And I'm like, what? I never said that. I never said anybody drove from anywhere and put anything in my car. Drugs wasn't in my car. So I never accused her of putting them in my car because it wasn't drugs in my car. You know, it was just so weird. Like she, I was not saying that. Like I knew what went down and I knew it didn't make sense. I, and it outside of my problems with Katie, I just knew it didn't make sense. And that's why I made those posts. Like, you guys, I'm innocent. I didn't, I was not running from the cops. I did not have any drugs on me. Um, yes. Well, I, I have a Yukon. And yes, she knew. She knew that you're making model on my Yukon because it would have been on my paperwork that she just purchased two weeks prior. So, yes. The paperwork that she purchased two weeks prior would have had the year making models of my vehicles, possibly my address. I'm not sure. I know back when we used to pull that information, when I worked at uh, World Finance and we would pull people's information on Pacer, it had their address, it had their vehicles, year make model, all the things, you know. Um, so, thank you. So anyways, I went and had a hair follicle test. She's on YouTube every day talking about me doing drugs. She's turning my people that were like my subs against me because it's just hard to believe that like I was innocent at this point, you know? And then she's convincing people that I'm blaming her, that I'm saying that she framed me. But that wasn't what I was saying. Um, so my first court date got pushed back. And then, um, it was right around the time, I think my second court date was going to be like March 28th or something like that. Um, March 28th, I think was my second court date. Oh, the second that she announced my arrest, I started losing subs. I actually had to turn all that into my lawyer. Like, I had to, um, I, ha I had to show, like, where I was at. Like, the day that I got arrested. And the day that I got arrested, I started losing subs. It, it, it'll actually tell you, like, on such and such day, if you gained subs or if you lost. And how many you gained or how many you lost. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That day, I immediately started losing subs. Um, and it just continued. <laughs> I just continued losing subs. Um, that's what I wondered, XMX. I actually wondered if maybe they confused me with another vehicle. It, it just didn't make sense. You know, thank you. Thank you. You like my accent? Thank you. So, exactly. Look at me. So, anyways, I remember I got my any labs results back. I think it was like sometime in February, maybe. I, I, don't, I don't really remember. I don't really remember when I got them back, but I got them back through email. I got the email saying, here's your results. And, of course, there was nothing in my system. I think I took like a 10 panel test, cocaine, clearly one of them, and nothing in my system. And it went back. I don't remember how long it went back, but it went back a while. You know what I'm saying? So while I still can't really talk about my arrest, I could post my drug test results. So I did. I posted my drug test results. What does Katie start saying? Katie claims that I sent my daughter's hair in that I mailed my daughter's hair in to any labs and had them tested. What? <laughs> That's not how it works, you know? But she actually said that on a live stream, that I probably sent in my daughter's hair to have it tested. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, it's really wild. Thank you, Zian. Um, even though I showed proof that I, I, I passed this hair follicle test, there were still people saying, someone, some, someone said, why did she wait a week to go uh, be drug tested? Because it takes a week for most drugs to get out of your system. So that's why she waited a week. Um, hello, no, I got arrested on a Saturday. I got out on a Sunday. 
I called the place that Monday and they set my appointment up on the 8th. I couldn't help it. You know what I'm saying? Like it, everything that I did, there were certain people just saying whatever they could say, you know, anything that they could say. And then people was like, um, she did a hair follicle test though. This is not a urinalysis test. It's a hair follicle test and that's different. Like a hair follicle test goes way back. Like it can go back like a year. This is not a urinalysis. Like maybe if she would have did a urinalysis, that could be your story. But this is a hair follicle test. People just did not want to believe that I wasn't on drugs. You know, as far as her and her people. Then come March 24th, I finally got the letter from... Yes, you have to show your ID and everything. So then come March 24th, it was the day after my daughter's birthday. Um, I don't know, Chris. I hope not because I'm just telling my story, you know. And March 24th, my daughter's birthday, I got a letter in the mail from the district attorney's office saying that the DA has watched my dash cam and due to the fact that Oh, and the lab results have come back. Lab results have come back, non-narcotic, it's not cocaine, and they've watched my dash cam, and the district attorney here has decided to drop my case. Thank you. Yes, praise God. So, I take to social media, and I can finally say my case has been dropped. The lab results come back, and it was not cocaine in my car. The district attorney watched the dash cam and saying that I was not running from the police and my case has been dropped. Now, there were still some people, there was literally people that said, that, that said my case got dropped because it was COVID and there were courts not wanting to deal with certain cases. There were so minimum that they just dropped them. There was literally people saying that because of COVID and because my case was just blah, they just dropped it because COVID. And I'm like, what? So it, it didn't matter what I did, you know? So after that, um, so after that, we really, me and my husband, we kind of talked about it. You know, what do we want to do from here going forward? Do we want to file a lawsuit? Do we not? And we had kind of settled on no, maybe not filing a lawsuit. Um, because we're just not suing people, you know, we just don't sue people. I mean, literally, there were times I, I could have sued people, and I didn't, you know. Um, um, exactly, they do it on Zoom. They don't just drop cases. What parish is that? Um, but... We kind of talked about it, you know, and then I spoke to my old boss and he was like, you know, you really should consider filing a lawsuit. And I said, well, you know, one of the reasons why I don't, we have six kids. We're, you know, we're not poor, but we're not rich by any means. And he says, well, um, I have a lot of friends that are lawyers and I may could get you a lawyer that will do this on contingency. Um, if I can find a lawyer that will do this on contingency, do you, will, you, will you do it? Because you should. You know, they really screwed you over. You really should sue them. I mean, your reputation will never be the same. Ever. There will be people in your hometown that will still question it. And there will definitely be people on YouTube that will question it. And that is your job. You know, um, he says, so if I can talk to someone, if I can talk to a lot. He had a, lawyer, a lot of lawyer friends. He says, if I can convince one of my lawyer friends to take the case on contingency, will you take it? And I said, well. Yeah, sure, I guess. And I remember I was at Walmart buying groceries. And not even 10 minutes later, he called me back. And he said, hey, great news. And I said, okay, what is it? He said, I spoke to one of my um, lawyer friends, and he's willing to meet with you. Um, he's going to meet with you next weekend. I said, okay, great. So uh, he met with me. Me and my old boss went to his um, his. Did you ask KJ if you could afford to sue? <laughs> um, I did not ask KJ. So we met in his office. It was like on a Saturday. I remember it was, um, we go to his office and we sit down and I tell him everything that went on. And what's so crazy is he said, do you have any enemies by chance? And I'm like, well, <laughs> funny story. 
I do. And, you know, I'm like, the only enemy I have is on YouTube. And this is who she is. And he's like, do you think there's any chance she called the cops on you? And I'm like, I don't know, you know. Um, so uh, he was like, okay, yes, I'll take your case. So this is what I need you to do. You need to prove damages. You know, you need to prove that this did, in fact, hurt your YouTube channel. With There's no denying that it did. That's a 1,000% honest. Like, it did. So I was like, okay, yeah, sure. I can do that. Um Oh, thank you, Mel MC. So, I didn't know that, though. I really want to start using my other channel to talk about people that was wrongly convicted or just have had crappy situations where people of power have screwed them over. Like, if you've had lawyers that screwed you over, I want to know about it. Write your write your story to me because I, I, want, I want to tell your story. So, um... Now, I did hear that the cop that initiated my stop was fired. I heard that he was fired from the police department, and he works for, like, the police jur jury now or something. I don't know. Police jury? Police jury? Like, work on roads and stuff? I don't know. So she's like, we need to prove that it damaged your reputation on YouTube. We need to prove that it was blasted to the mat. Or he's like, we need to prove that it was blasted to the masses. And I'm like, okay, yes, I can do all that. So I got home and I just start sending him everything. I send him any, like the videos that KJ made about it. I send him videos that other people put up about it, Unirock. I send him every comment that was made about it. And then a few weeks later, he's like, listen, I want to introduce you to this female attorney because she covers uh she does civil rights violations and um i think she would be a great addition to the team and um i know i am very distracted i'm so sorry i really think i have adhd i'm not even gonna <laughs> front thank you kimmy thank you but so i met with her and she was like yep you have a really good case i think you know we could we could help you out with this. So, yeah, moving forward, we did. And like I said, because that case is closed. So, we started that. We have been in litigation for, like, two years. And finally, on April, in April, um, there was a settlement. Obviously, when there's a settlement, you know, one side says they're not guilty. They're not admitting to guilt. Uh, but, you know. Uh, there was a settlement and there are contracts in the settlement where I can't talk about the terms of the settlement as far as, you know, how much we got and blah, da, 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 or anything like that. But the fact that they settled, I, to me, that tells me there, yes, I was definitely yep, a two year lawsuit. It was extremely stressful. And yeah, of the meetings with lawyers all the time that it took to get all my information together, every time I had to drive to meet with my attorneys, every time I had to go through all those, because I didn't go through that. I didn't go through all the crap that people said about me. When I was finally opening up those emails and I finally had people, I actually contacted some of my friends and said, listen, anything that you can find where somebody talked about my arrest, email it to me. And I already had that done for a while, like back when it first started happening. I had that done, right? So then I have to go back and I'm reading all of these comments and I'm seeing that some of these people were like my subs saying things about me now. You know, it was very heartbreaking. It was very difficult to deal with. Um, my record, we, my lawyer is in the process of expunging my record. So it is going to get expunged. Um, and... One thing that, for some, I never felt comfortable riding in my car again after that, really. I always felt like the cops knew it. And I felt like, despite the fact that it got dropped, despite the fact that we sued, um, I felt like they still thought that I was like some drug addict or something. You know what I'm saying? I remember I saw the cop. That, okay, so the next day, they did come to my house and they brought my medicine, right? And I was terrified. 
uh, I had my husband op open the door at first, and then as he's out there talking to them, I stepped out um, because I, I wanted to ask him a few questions, but I was terrified. I wanted to ask because I started doing my research Monday, uh, Sunday, as soon as I got home. So I, I wanted to know the name of the roadside test kit that he used, and I wanted to ask again how long they had been following me. So when I stepped outside, I'm like, sh voice is shaking. I'm terrified, you know, because it's two of the cops that pulled me up and arrested me. And I said, um, I, I need to know what is the name brand of the roadside test kit that you use. And um, he says, Searchy, top of the line. He says, it's like the Nike if it was a shoe, top of the line. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, and how, how, how long were y'all following me for? Like four and a half miles. And I'm like, okay. All right. So it was a lot. I mean, I remember videos of people trying to debunk what I was saying about my experience. Um, you know, when I was saying they use these $2 test kits that the probability of them being right is like slim. And then they arrest you for it. And then Katie goes on a live saying, that's not how it works, LB. Uh, they use roadside test kits. And if it's positive, then nine times out of 10 is positive. They send it to a lab to confirm, but usually if it's positive in that test kit, then it's positive and what you have is drugs. When that was not the case, it was not the case, anybody that did any little bit of research on that would see that roadside test kits are, are known to be inaccurate. Bama, email me. If you want your story told, email me because on the Bass Chat, we're gonna start talking about that. We're going to start telling people stories for them. I wish I would have thought about that. Cheryl T., now anytime I have any interaction with the police, lawyers, anybody, I record it. Anytime I have any, any, any interaction with, if I'm going to the courthouse, best believe my phone is on. To this day, I'm terrified of the police. To this day, uh, if a cop gets behind me, I'm getting off the road. And Sean's like, but that makes you look guilty. You know, if you get off the road, they're going to think that you're, like, trying to hide from them. I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. My kids have seen me, like, freak out over the cops getting behind me. And the, my son and my daughter both, the oldest ones, have both said, "My, we're in a one-consent state. Louisiana's a one-consent state. Um, both of my kids have said, Mama, you're not doing anything wrong. It's fine. And I'm like, but I wasn't doing anything wrong the night that I got pulled over and arrested, okay? So I'm not taking my chance. I'm not taking my chance. Anybody that has a story, my moderator, Candy, she has a really good story um, that I'm going to tell on my channel for her. And thankfully, they just got that situated. And this has been a long time situation that Candy's been dealing with. If you were falsely arrested and you want me to tell your story, please email me because I think this is going to be a project that me and Sean work on together. It'll probably be when school starts. Um, yeah, this is why I'm finally able to talk is because we did sue. Uh, it was a two-year lawsuit where I really couldn't talk. Now, the one thing that I don't like about the outcome of the lawsuit there's a few things that I don't really like about the outcome of the lawsuit, but one thing that I really don't like is I still can't say too much about the process of the litigation. You know, I'm not allowed to talk about the process of the litigation. I'm not allowed to say who I sued, <laughs> which, I mean, people can figure that out. That's not a hard one to figure out who I sued. You know, I'm not allowed to name them as far as, you know, um, and that's for them to cover their butt, obviously. I think they know they screwed me over and did something that was wrong. And it makes them look bad if I'm sitting here saying this, this, these, this uh, government agency, this particular government agency is the one that did X, Y, Z to me. So I'm not allowed to name them. So I don't, I don't name them. 
10 year divorce and I went to the FBI. Oh wow, Stephanie. Wow. Right, cops obviously, you know what I'm saying? Um, right, Valerie, it's pretty obvious who I sued. Um, so I don't, I don't have to say it. There are things that I would like to talk about that due to the settlement I can't, but I can still tell my story from what my lawyer said is anything that happened to me, you know, when I got pulled over, I can talk about, um, I can say that, I know lace and trains, I definitely feel like that's pretty crappy. Um, I definitely, I, I feel the same way, like what happened to freedom of speech. If I understand some things in litigation, like once you settle, but I did feel like through the settlement, what I wanted wasn't, it was more about what they wanted. You know what I'm saying? Um, they got everything that they wanted in that settlement, it, 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 you know, in the terms and conditions and, and the agreement, like, oh, she can't do this. She can't say that. She can't say that. And mine was like, well, can we put this in there? And it was like, oh, no, they're probably not going to agree to that. <laughs> I mean, so, I mean, it sucks. But at the end of the day, it's over with. It is what it is. There are steps, steps that I think you can take if you're not happy with certain things. I think you can, you know, take steps after that if there's things that you're not happy with. Um, so that's being looked into, but, um, yeah, I mean, as far as I am, it was a stressful two years. It was a stressful two years, you know. Definitely stressful two years to deal with it. You know, having to worry about depositions and every time I had to watch Katie or Uni or another channel, you know, Aaron going, you know, to talk, talking about my arrest. It was frustrating and, um, what, be, be careful, Sean. <laughs> Don't say who. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot to go through. I'm terrified of guns, you guys. I'm terrified of guns. You guys can ask Sean. I am terrified of guns. Don't like them at all. So to go through a situation where you had like four guns pointed at you and you didn't know why, you didn't know what to do, you didn't know what would be the right action, the wrong action, you had no idea. And then, you know, when I was being hauled off to jail, I didn't know when I was going to be able to get out. I didn't know when I was going to be able to get home to my family. The way it affected me on YouTube it was literally three weeks after my nephew passed away. So my family was already going through it. Um, it just put a lot of stress on me that, oh, and my kids did get, my daughter got picked on at school. She did. My daughter got picked on at school. So my daughter was dating this boy and they had a breakup and it, yeah, Sean loves guns. I don't, I'm terrified of them. Um, My boyfriend, not my boyfriend, <laughs> my boyfriend, I'm sorry, babe, um, but my daughter had, a, my daughter was dating this little boy, and they broke up, and this bullying situation ensued, and he and his friends were bullying her, and they were picking on her about my situation, calling me a crackhead and stuff, and um, there was, just, there was a lot that happened, you know, there was a lot that happened. And, you know, the only reason I've never really talked to anybody about it as far as seek counseling or anything is just because I feel like I don't have time. <laughs> um, I definitely feel like I should have, especially right afterwards, because I was a mess afterwards. I was a mess after this happened. I mean, for, for a minute, you know what I'm saying? Um, thank you, Lace and Chains. I think the same way. I'm like, I, I'm the last person that I think should be arrested for anything. Um. Yes. So does anybody have any questions? I know, you know, I finally told my story. I know it was kind of all over the place because I was trying to keep up with the chat. Um, but do you guys have any questions? I'll answer them. And it feels good to like talk. Oh, I'm absolutely still traumatized. A thousand percent. And the, the way I know that is because I'm still terrified of the police. If a cop gets behind me, I am off the road. Off the road. 
Um, but I always worried that um, they were watching me and stuff. Like, I always, when I would drive around town in my Yukon, I knew they knew it. Uh, about two weeks after my arrest, I remember being in the grocery store and the cop that transported me, he was in the grocery store as, as well. And we saw each other and we locked out, like we looked. He saw me, I saw him. And I left. I left and I went and got my car and I called Sean. I'm like the cop that took me to jail. He's here and I'm, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. And Sean's like, just come home, you know? And I'm like, but what if he follows me? Like he knows I'm here now. What if he like calls backup or something? Like I'm scared. You know what I'm saying? I have not, Rachel. And the reason why is because I can't get them. I actually tried to get the searchy, um, roadside test kit, but the only way you can get, get them is if you are in the police department. Um, I, yeah. Oh yeah. I have problems sleeping, eating. I mean, I was a mess for a while. I was go. I was going to go to the store for cat food. I'm going to be waiting till tomorrow morning. So sorry you went through that. When you was arrested, when you was pulled over, Thank you, Bossy. Thank you. I mean, I literally have so much, you guys, of what people said about me. Um, just nobody believed in me. No, well, I can't say nobody. A lot of people did believe me. Um, but the majority, I feel like, didn't. But I couldn't blame them. I really couldn't blame them because it didn't make sense. How much sense did it make? You know what I'm saying? Um, Honda, this was back in December 2019 when I was falsely arrested and they, uh, what I was falsely arrested for was improper lane usage, flight from an officer and schedule, schedule two, schedule two drugs, which is drug, uh, which is cocaine. Um, but it was chalk. I actually have considered putting cameras in my car, but I am cheap. <laughs> I'm cheap. Um, but I've looked at cameras several times and I've thought about it, but, uh, what I've decided is if I ever get pulled over again and I don't have a camera, I haven't taken that step to buy cameras. I'm going to turn my phone on. I will just record. I'll probably have a full blown panic attack and have to be taken to the emergency room by the time the cop walks up to my door, you know, but, um, I, I'm definitely going to turn my phone on to film because, I just don't feel comfortable anymore. And I know not all cops are bad cops, but let me tell you guys, my husband's military, right? Sean's Army, National Guard. He served two tours. We have always been huge supporters of the police, military. But after that, there was there was a period where I hated the police. And it wasn't just, it wasn't like I just had this understanding, like that there's some bad apples. For a small period, I was like, they're all bad. I hate all police. Um, but it, it, after a while, I kind of did get out of that and come to the realization, like, no, they're not all bad. There's good ones, they're bad. There's, you know, there's good, there's bad. And I, unfortunately, just got pulled over by the bad ones. Oh, wow, Beck. Holy crap. Thank you, Lace and Chain. What do you do when the police call for donations? I hang that phone up quick, fast, and in a hurry. <laughs> Hell no. Oh. But yeah, I've thought about um, putting the camera in there. And, I, it's just, and they're not expensive. But I watch a um, I watch a channel a lot. It's called Audit the Audit. And they talk about stories like this. And a lot of times, um, thankfully, on Audit the Audit, there's, there's several cases where people have cameras and they're able to prove that the cop lied about something or they're able to prove that they didn't break the law. Like there was this one woman, she's got sunglasses on and her husband owns a car dealership, her and her husband. So she's test driving one of the cars that they just bought, right? And they have like a, um, 
Yes, Shelly, it was sidewalk chalk that your kids play with. It was it was our kids' chalk, yeah. So, Honda, she ran with it. She somehow found out about my arrest before anyone else did and ran with it. Um, but, I guess car dealerships, whenever they, you know, buy a car and before they sell it, they have insurance on it um and it covers the owner of the car dealership and any of the workers right which would be the wife so she's driving she turns her blinker on to get into the turning lane she stopped at a red light and this cop turns around and comes up behind her and says and what's crazy is when she pulls over she immediately unlatches her seatbelt just because she's got a habit of when she puts cars in park to put the, to take the seatbelt off so you see her on the dash cam pull over Park, take off seatbelt. And it's still on her like this. Like, it's still on her arm like this. So, when the cop walks up, he's like, license and registration. And she, like, grab, goes to get up. And she's like, oh, I just took my seatbelt off, though. And she hands. And he goes, no, that's the reason I pulled you over. And she's like, what? And he's like, because you wasn't wearing your seatbelt. She's like, no, I, I just took it off because I have a habit of, like, putting the car in park and taking my seat. I just took it off, I swear. He's like, no, when I passed you, you didn't have your seatbelt on. And she's like, and she's like, I got a dash cam. And he's like, I don't care. You didn't have your seatbelt on. Thankfully, she went to court, was able to show the footage, and, you know, it was thrown out. But I don't think any of them ever have. It was expunged. Well, my lawyer is working on that right now. My lawyer is working on getting an expunged. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, let's see. How much this may be it? And I, you should know that nobody's going to trust anything that you say. Nobody's going to trust anything that you say. Oh, that's the whole thing. I would play some of what she said, but she uses my real name, and I don't go by my real name anymore. And the reason I don't go by my real name is because people paying for my finances. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of – to this day, you can literally Google LB arrested, and stuff pops up on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's devastating. Someone, uh, this comment, they're like, you know, why are you blasting her arrest? And um, this person said, Katie is a reporter. She is reporting news people. LB got arrested, and y'all still try to flip the script and try to make Katie look like the bad guy. Get the F out of here, people. Shake in my head. And someone said, Jesus Christ, this lady isn't a reporter. She's a YouTuber with a bad, she's a YouTuber with bad Botox. And so the other person, the person said, when your response is to attack and make fun of someone, it shows your lack of intelligence and character. Someone says, uh, because y'all took it and ran with it and accused her of being an addict when it's obviously Katie who was high all the time. I'm reading a comment. These were all the things I had to send to my lawyer. Because y'all took this and ran with it and accused her of being an addict when it's obviously Katie who was high all the time. The police are alleging LB had drugs. That doesn't make it true. If you don't understand words like allege, proof, and suspicion, you don't understand. And then this other person said, um, you should go back and read what her charges were. It's not alleged. It's public record. Police, police don't charge you on assumption. Do you have any brains in your head? This person just said, do you have any brains in your head? Maybe, do you have a brain in your head? Not any brains in your head? You might want to read up before you comment. And the word addict never came from me. Mistake number two. So this person was like, 
is not alleged is public record, but it's also innocent until proven guilty. Um, hey, Virginia. Hey, from Louisiana. I don't know. I, you know, there were things that I definitely wanted to be done. Um, I wanted a public apology. <laughs> that didn't happen. Um, so this person said, possible scenario. She changed lanes without signaling. Cops lit her up. Instead of pulling over right away, she drove another 30 seconds to pull over into a parking lot. She had a few Tylenols with codeine on her because a friend gave her some for a bad headache a month ago. So there were people trying to, like, make it make sense, you know? And I, I, I appreciate that. Um, so someone clipped Katie talking about it and put it on Twitter. And someone said, what? This seriously surprises me. And then someone else said, with six children at home? Wow. Someone else said, I'm shocked. What the heck? Fleeing an officer caught with drugs? This is not good. And then someone, I don't, I don't see where it is, but someone said she's going to make y'all look like fools because she's innocent. And when she can tell her story, she's going to make you guys look like fools. This person, who was literally always bashing me, said, how is she going to make us look like fools? She was arrested and drugs were found in her car and she fled. Those are facts. No, Miss Tammy, they're not facts. Even if they drop the charges, even if they drop some charges like they did with Amber in a deal, it doesn't make what happened less true. Well, Tammy, not going to say your last name, but my lawyer saw that and my lawyer thought it was hysterical that just because someone's charged with something, you think that it means that it's true. And then this person said, when the test comes back that it wasn't drugs, then what? When she shows the results of her drug test, are you still going to say that she was high? And she says, they test the drugs before they charge her. Some people are so naive. Tammy, Miss Tammy, they have $2 roadside test kits and they send it to a lab. And there's been plenty of people that have come, come to find out the charges were dropped. Because come to find out, they had donut glaze in their car, or cotton candy, or um, uh, chalk. You know what I'm saying? So yes, Miss Tammy, you do look like a fool to me and my lawyer. Thank you. Oh, and this Tammy person also shared the post from my arrest. LB was caught with drugs. That's a fact. That's a fact. She's claiming the drug test is negative. Not a fact. I was claiming it because that's what it was. I saw it with my own two eyes. When I got out of jail that Sunday, I did my research and I realized, holy crap, that roadside test kit that he had in front of my face was not even positive. Um, okay. Oh, oh, no, she's talking about my drug test, especially if she waited several days before taking one and probably searched ways to pass them anyway. Drugs, arrest, everything she lies about. That's what she said. So, she's claiming the drug test is negative. Not a fact. I literally shared my drug test on, so, like, on social media. It had all the information. Okay, Cheryl. I know I'm getting kind of far off into this now, and I'm kind of getting a little petty. But, you guys, I went through a lot back then. Like, every time I had to read these comments, um, because there were several times I had to get all this stuff together send it to one attorney and then get it all together again and send it to another attorney. And then right there towards the end, my attorney couldn't find all of this. So I had to get it all together again and send it in again. So, right, they wouldn't drop a, co a, cocaine, uh, a cocaine case, right. Someone said, LB just got her drug test, a hair follicle. It was negative. Yes. Oh, my God. The story gets crazier. I hope her children can't read any of this. I'm hoping her children weren't in the car. I don't agree with her, um, but I never want her to deal with CPS. Not sure how her state works, but I hope they're not involved. Why would they be involved?
Now there's this super secretive hair follicle drug test that she did. And of course, it come back negative. But you know, she can't post that proof either. But I did post it. Literally right after I got it back, I posted it on Twitter. So yeah, it was a lot that I went through. Um, I hope every one of those people that made those comments have come back to be like, oh, wow. Whoops. I was one of those ones that was constantly on Twitter talking about how everybody was foolish because they didn't believe what was right in front of us. I hope Tammy, Tammy, I hope you watch this, Tammy, um, and you understand that you were completely wrong. And I just closed a settlement with the very people that did this to me. So there. Um, but anyways, you guys, yeah. It's very, it is, and I probably shouldn't read it, you guys, but I wanted you guys to kind of understand. I, I went through so many, anybody that said anything about my, that was a big part of this, is I had to show proof that it affected my channel. I had to show proof that it, you know, I'm, when I started my channel, I'm just known as like a nice person. I don't do drugs. I don't have any bad habits. Like that's kind of what I'm known for, this Christian girl. And then this happens and that's questioned. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's other YouTubers going live on YouTube, you know, uh, saying that I'm a drug addict. Do you ever want to move over it? Oh, yeah, there were many times we wanted to give up. There were many times we said, you know what, maybe we should just say, just say forget it. Um, you know what, KP? There, listen, the name Tammy, this person named Tammy, ever since the very first time Katie came at me, there was this Tammy person that has come for me. I had to block her email account because she was coming at me through email. She got in on my, um, she got in on my, my Facebook account and was uh, commenting under pictures of my kids. Do you know your mom's a backstabber? Stuff like that. Like, what? My daughter was like 11 in that picture. <laughs> and you're like, commenting on, it's really weird. I'm not gonna say nothing about that. But I want, I, I've had this desire. Oh, this is another thing. So when I come out to say it was actually chalk that was in my car, I got picked on about that too. Um, there were several people that was like, oh my God, it was chalk. Ha <laughs> ha, she wants us to believe that it's chalk. Ha ha ha. There would be people on uh, Twitter laughing about, don't get caught with chalk. Uni, Uni Rock made fun of it um, about getting caught with chalk. I, I, I think his... Um, What's his little bud, his imaginary buddy, the bread? What's his bread's name? Even was making jokes about chalk. Um, I know, right, Valerie? I don't know. There were, um, and then I said, I made the comment that when all of this is said and done, I would like to stop things like this from happening. I would like to get with the sheriff. I would like to get with the mayor, whoever I need to get with to stop these things from happening, to make it to where they cannot put people in jail based off of a roadside test kit. And I said that, and then I had people mocking me for that. Like, oh, LB is going to change the world. Ha 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 ha. Like, wow, that's very nasty. You know, it's very nasty when I say, when something is done wrong to me and it affects me, it affects my whole family, and I say I want to make sure this never happens to anybody else, the very person that's laughing at me about it, I want to make sure it doesn't happen to you. I want to make sure it doesn't happen to your kids while you're laughing and you're mocking me. Let it happen to you and then you'll feel the way that I feel, you know? Thank you, The Reels. Absolutely, everything happens for a reason. I do know that one was fired uh, before my, I was told that one of the guys was fired before my case was even dropped because, and this is just what I heard, I don't know, but I heard that, no, they still do the roadside test kit here. So 
So I heard that one of the guys was um, fired because there was a similar. So he was the one that initiated the stuff for me. I heard he did the same thing a couple of other times, and they let him go. Um, I don't know about the other ones that was involved. I don't know if they still work there. Um, how did they realize it was child? Well, I realized that it was child conduct. So it the roadside test kit that they used was negative for, um, it was a negative test. It was a negative one. It was negative. It, it did not show up drugs. They said that it did because there was two little specks, two little pink specks. But the way that these kits work, all of it's supposed to turn a color. It's supposed to turn either pink or blue or a mixture of pink and blue. Um, so the district attorney realized that it was wrong when he watched the dash cam. When the district attorney went back and watched the dash cam, he realized that it was wrong and that it was, in fact, negative. They sent that test kit to a lab, and it came back that it wasn't, it wasn't cocaine. And that's when, actually before that, I realized that it was um, chalk because we always kept chalk on my husband's workbench outside and it was just a few days after that that I was outside and it was gone and I was like holy crap I know that's what that was that had to be the chalk yeah absolutely Valerie exactly Foxy bot um, I, you know I still want to do that. And I don't know, especially now that everything is done and over with, especially now that the lawsuit is done and over with, I've really been trying to figure out what I can do. What steps do I need to take? Like, I know we have a really good sheriff here. So we just got a new sheriff like a year ago. After my arrest, we got a new sheriff. And he's a really good guy. He is cracking down on... Uh, drug users and stuff like that. Um, so I really want to reach out to him, but I don't know how I can go about it. I don't know if I can. I don't know what steps I need to take, but I really want to do that. Um, also, something else that I wanted to do was I wanted to get those roadside test kits, and I wanted to do an experiment on here and show you guys how wrong they can be. But I tried to order them, and you have to have, like, a badge number and all of that. Like, you have to be, like, law enforcement to be able to get those uh, roadside test kits. Did they ever apologize to you? No, they did not. Are you talking about Katie and Uni or the police? Because the police definitely did it, and I don't think Katie or Uni ever did. Who used a full sandwich bag for drugs? I know, right? I, I don't know what you keep drugs in because I don't do drugs. Um, but I would have to imagine, it was so weird, because it was a sandwich bag about this size, zip, you know what I'm saying, and literally there was nothing in it. When he used his knife, he had to go into the very, like, deep pocket of the side to get any little residue. There was, like, white residue on the inside of the bag, like, obviously where chalk had been. Um, so there was five, four police officers involved, from what I can remember. Yeah, four for sure. Um, one did get fired, and I'm not sure about the other one. Yeah, you know, like I said, I drive in a vehicle that I think would be, like, suspicious vehicle because it is a black Yukon, blacked out windows, 24 inch rims. So I wonder if maybe they thought I was someone else and then when they seen that it was me, they just had to commit to it because they had already pulled me over and had their guns pulled. I don't, I don't know. You try not to put Coke in bag with corners because it gets stuck in there. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. If you really want to do that, work on healing from the inside out and start reaching out because I think you can make a big change. I really would like to. Um, I don't think we should be using those at all. I'm all for tackling the drug problem that we have in our area, um, but I don't think we should ruin people's lives. That's what I was saying. Like when For the few people that was like, I knew she was on drugs. I knew she was on drugs. I'm like, I never 
never seen a drug addict that have hair this good. You know, so look, look at this shiny hair. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? Um, yes. Uh, when I was pulled over, I was pulled over by four cars, and they all jumped out and pulled their weapons on me. I actually just bought a new car because I do worry that they, like, know my ride, which, I mean, I live in a small town. They pass by my house all the time, so they already know my ride. But I did get a new ride. Um, it's my dream ride. I actually got my dream ride. Sean got me my dream ride, you guys. Sean, are you on here? Um, I've been working really hard. We put the studio together, and I am hoping to um, grow and continue to put out content that you guys love. Oh, that's another thing, too, Lindsay. Not only was I asked by the first, the first attorney that I met with, he was like, do you have any enemies? And I was like, oh, well, just one. He was like, do you think it's possible that, you know, and I was like, I don't know. But when we were doing my deposition, both attorneys asked, is it possible that, because they, they had a file of everything that this one YouTuber said. They had a file of everything that she said. Um, I was like, do you think it's possible that this girl, and I'm like, listen, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Y'all tell me what happened. Why, you know, why they were pulling me over. Yeah, Slinky. But yeah, I gotta, if my keys were out here, I could show you guys my keys and uh, you could see what kind of car I got. They did pull guns, yeah. Well, you can tint your windows here, but you, they're not, there's, you're not, they're not supposed to be a certain level of tint, but I did not tint my windows. My good friend actually tinted them for me for my birthday one day. So one year, about like right after I got the ride, right after I got that Yukon, my friend came to my house and was like, hey, I'm going to take your car to get an oil change and I'm going to wash it for your birthday. Um, is that okay? And I said, yeah, sure. Uh, so she leaves in my car <laughs> and she comes back. Uh, hours later and the windows are blacked out she my windows were blacked out my car was so clean um, and um, I you know I was like oh my goodness I was like how dark is this is this like illegal and she was like yeah it is <laughs> and I was like oh great thank you and she was like it's I think it was like five percent uh, tent. And I was like, oh my God, what am I going to say? But we do live in, like, where I lived then was a city that, like, I knew all the police officers. They actually sat in my driveway because I lived in this little small town right as you were coming in it on this very big hill. And this big cedar house is where I used to live. And so right when you come to town, into my town, the cops would sit in our driveway. And that's where they were sit to clock people because you would come around a curve and there, bam, that, there they would be. So, I mean, she got my windows blacked out, and she pulled up, and I was like, girl, is that illegal? She was like, yeah, it is, but you ain't got to worry about it, you know? The cops sit in your driveway. Uh, they're good. You know, they're cool. And I'm like, yeah, probably not, but I always do worry about it still. I've never taken it off. <laughs> this happened in 2019. Um, no. So, what's, no, okay. Reports, the reports don't make sense. I could tell you that. From, uh. So, you know how cops, when they pull you over, they all have to write a report of why they pulled you over and what happened? It's really weird. Uh, the cop that initiated the stop, his report doesn't make a lot of sense. Because um, one thing was said about, okay, so that night, I was pulled over allegedly for improper lane usage. Now, I wasn't told. I was never told that night what I was pulled over for. When I was getting booked into the jail, um, my charge was improper lane usage, flight from an officer, and Schedule 2. So I was like, what improper lane usage? Like, what is this? And I didn't know that I was being charged with flight. Like, I pulled over. All I thought I was being charged with was a Schedule 2, which was bad enough, you know? So, um, uh, she said, well, that would be the reason they pulled you over. Like, when you're going around a curb, you probably went over the yellow line or the, or the white line, you know, and that would be why they pulled you over. However, when, when that 
the, the report said something about I stopped too long at a stop sign. I stopped too long at a stop sign. Which is suspicious. But that's not against the law to stop too long at a stop sign. And I didn't. I, I didn't stop at no stop signs too long. Like, I would have had to, st from leaving my house to where I was pulled over, I would have had to stop at one, two, three. Three stop signs. And all of them would be back roads. My back roads. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Absolutely keeping up with KP. Uh, my dream car is a Range Rover. <laughs> did anyone in my real life not believe me? Like, did anybody in my real life think that I had drugs on me? Well, it was kind of like, they were like, what? What? Like, what? Net net? Like, that's what everybody calls me. You know what I'm saying? Like, what? Net net? Yes, Jacob, you did ask me something. Um, every, it was, it didn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? Um, as good as you know somebody, if they get arrested for flight in this Schedule 2, the first thing that goes in your mind is, oh, they were running because they had drugs on them. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, I, no, okay, I can put it this way. Nobody was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Nobody was like, oh, that makes sense. Um, there was people that was like, does she have, like, is she, does she do anything? Like, does she do any drugs? Like, I didn't think she did. Does she do any drugs? You know, and, um, no, of course not. <laughs> um, so, I, nobody, like, really thought, oh, my goodness. Jacob, I love jump houses. I, I do like jump houses. Bounce houses. Yes, I love them. <laughs> um, we well, see, I am the most, like, I, I'm not confrontational. Like, it's just, I, I'm not confrontational. I, this is the way that I look at it, Blue Velvet River. I went through so much to do all of that. I have a job that I'm willing to put in all the work to take care of my family. I could have a dream car. Let me get my dream car. So I did. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. How long have we been on for? I feel like we've been on for a hot minute. But we still have a lot of people in the chat, and you guys are still talking. But, um feel like after my false police encounter and totally my truck i got 2020 white range rover also i like heated seats and a leather my yukon has heated seats as well so i am used to the heated seats leather um running gray wolf okay what's so crazy is about a month or two after my arrest i pulled into the dollar store right like right across the street from my house pretty much and i see a yukon that looks just like mine and guess who gets out of it? A black male wearing a tank top, tattoos. And I don't want to stereotype him, but I really were wondering if they thought that was him. And that's why they went so hard on me pulling me over, which would be BS as well. You know what I'm saying? But it really made me wonder that. Because I really feel like either somebody contacted the police and called them on me, or they thought I was someone else. Right, even improper lane usage doesn't warrant four cars. And from what my attorney told me, right, when a cop gets behind you, you do not have to pull over until you are in a safe location. Um, and you don't have to pull up. So they have to initiate their lights and their siren. And I think it's like a mile, like a mile or so after lights and sirens are initiated before you're charged with flight. They thought you switched place or something, maybe. But yeah. <laughs> cough, cough. I just knew it didn't make sense back then. You know what I'm saying? I just knew it didn't make sense. Mine's black. 
Mine has a great sound system. They didn't have probable cause to search my car. I, not that I know of. But my, according to my attorney, they didn't. Now, the one thing um, with my, between my Yukon and the new car is my Yukon did not have a heated steering wheel. My new car has heated steering wheel. And it's like, oh my gosh, my new car is like, if a car is passing on the road when I'm trying to back up, it'll literally like beep, 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 letting me know that there's a car coming. You literally can't run into anything. <laughs> I did not give him permission, permission to search. No. So, okay. So when they said, do you have drugs in this car? I said, no, I don't do drugs. And they said, we're going to rip the effing car apart. We're going we're gonna to rip the effing car apart until we find the effing drugs. They said the F part somewhere along the lines in there. And um, I said, that's fine. I don't have drugs in my car. So my lawyer said they may try to use that as you giving them permission. But really, I, I wasn't saying that it's fine for you to search. I was just like, I don't have drugs. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wasn't really trying to, I wasn't giving the permission. I was just so, like, confused about what was happening that I was just telling them, like, I don't have drugs. Like, they were going to search it regardless. They were already making their way to it, you know? Right. When you've never been pulled over, you've never been in any type of trouble, you don't know. You don't know what rights you have. Like, I had no idea all the things that I could deny. You know what I'm saying? I watch Audit the Audit now, so I have a little bit more understanding of what they can and can't do. Um, yes, they said that. So, when I was immediately cuffed and put on the ground, another cop immediately said, do you have drugs in the car? And I said, no, I don't do drugs. No. And he said, we're going to, we're going to tear the effing car apart until we find the effing drugs. He either said, we're going to tear the effing car apart until we find the drugs, or we're going to tear the car apart until we find the effing drugs. One of the two. Either way, one dropped the F bomb, which I didn't appreciate. Because I'm like, why are you going to say that part? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, bossy, bossy, email me. Email me, bossy, because this ain't this ain't even the half of what happened with. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy what happened, but litigation, woo, <laughs> wild. Okay, just so everyone is clear, the field sobriety test is not a pass or fail. It is simply to collect evidence on you. Yeah, but if you do certain things, can't they charge you with like DUI or DWI, right? That's what I was thinking. I'm thinking they're trying, they're getting me to do this so many times, hoping that I'll, they can charge me with DUI. I wonder. The only reason I know I can refuse to search my car is my husband took a concealed carry class before he passed away. Yeah. This is the reason he became a lawyer. You know what? I have such appreciation for good lawyers. Going through this whole process has really made me come to the understanding of a few things. One, is there are crooked lawyers. There are crooked lawyers, you guys. There are lawyers that literally work with the other side, the side that you're suing, and their best interest is what they got going on and not what you got going on. There are good lawyers who, no matter what, will go through to the ends of the earth to make sure you're taken care of and will do everything they can to make this experience that you went through as least traumatic as possible. Did you ever contact the local news? I didn't. I can't. This whole time, you know, being in litigation, um, I couldn't. I couldn't. And now I really can't. I mean, they could talk about my arrest, but I don't even know if I could at this point. I would have refused to send search. I would have made them bring drug dogs. Come in. Is it locked? Hold on, guys. Sorry. Let me let let me let Sean in. I'm gonna do it. Hey, what is it? Do you have the keys to the car? They're in the car. Okay. Is it locked? No, I'm still on.
and brought me dinner. Yeah, love Audit the Audit. Audit the Audit is amazing. If you guys want to see, like, people be wrongfully arrested, watch Audit the Audit. Like, honestly, after this happened to me, I was like, I'm going to send my story to Audit the Audit and let him, like, go over it. You know, that's, you, okay, so I heard, and I want to say she may have told me this, um, that she was actually following my, um, she was following my local police department, and that's how she knew. That's what I was wondering if I could. Thank you. This was like my dream chair, but I wasn't going to get it for a while. Out of the audit, it is amazing. It what he does is people send in like their um their dash cam to show about what went down, and it shows how lawsuits get started because um like it'll show someone pulled over just because of the type of car they were in, or just because of the color of their skin. They're pulled over. A cop was profiling, right, and they didn't do anything wrong. And the cop will make them get out, break all kind of laws to search them and violate all, you know what I'm saying? All kind of things. And then they grade the police officers and the person that was pulled over on how they acted, you know, on how, how they behaved. That, that was kind of what I wanted to do, though. I was like... I think I'm going to send my story to Audit the Audit and let him break it down because I think he would have gave, I absolutely think he would have gave the cops an F. Um, I think uh, I probably would, I think I would have got an A. <laughs> um, what kind of chair is it? Uh, just a desk uh, office chair. I got it off Amazon. Actually, someone got this for me, to be honest. If I'm being perfectly honest, someone actually got this for me when I was doing my own. When I was um, building my shop, as you guys know, I was actually um, using Sean's chair at first. And uh, someone actually was like, girl, get yourself the chair and sent me the money for the chair. And I was like, thank you. It was really nice. It really has. You know what? I, you know what's crazy? Um, it's so wild because back when I was going through this, and when I was having to send all this stuff to my lawyers, and I was seeing all the comments, I was seeing all these comments from people questioning what you know if I was a drug addict. Questioning my character was really tough. Really tough to deal with. But it proved my case. You know what I'm saying? Like, essentially, I would have, I, I might not would have been able to sue the sue had it not affected me the way. So it's really like, I don't know how big, how good of a case I would have had without what Katie did. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I still would have had a case because they definitely broke laws. I mean, they didn't have a reason to search me. They never really stated a reason. Nobody ever told me why they pulled me over. You know what I'm saying? There were so many things that just didn't make sense. Um, pulling guns on me. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, um, I still would have had a case. I just think I had a better case because of Katie. <laughs> I'm sure when Katie was bashing me, she had no idea. Um, well, this is going to make LB's case even better. BR, BR in the house. I've been told that I could. Um, I've spoke to my attorney about it and, you know. Exactly. <laughs> Bye, Rachel. Good night. I hope you, hope you sleep well. Yeah, he's pretty decent. Or amazing. He's pretty amazing. <laughs> pretty decent. You're just decent. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's the thing. Is it's it was just horrible that with all that I was dealing with, there were some people that had sympathy. There were, you know, there there were some people that said, you know, she's going through a lot. She just lost her nephew. We don't know if somebody gave her an anxiety pill and she didn't take it. She left it in her car. And when the cops got behind her, she freaked out and or we somebody even said, Thank you, Jane, for the super sticker. Thank you so much. Somebody even said maybe it was an unmarked car. So she didn't know if it was actually the police. So she kept going for a minute till she got to a well lit area. Maybe it was something like that, you know? Um 300 people have not liked this yet. What are you guys doing? Like the video. Um so Mel, I, you can come on my channel. Look, when we start doing the bash chat, you can come on and you can tell all the cases you know. Because that's what, like I said, after I was arrested, I was against the police for a minute. I was like, they're all evil. They're all pieces of crap. They ruin people's lives. And then I really had to reel it back in and come to the understanding of that's not the case. There are bad apples in every field of employment. Everything. You know, there's bad preachers. There's bad priests. There's bad everything. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it just so happened, unfortunately, I got the bad ones. And my thing, too, is they weren't even trying. Like, you know, when I'm like, let me take a drug test. They could have been like, okay, we can, we can at least let you take a drug test. No, 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 no drug, no drug test. Um, also, there were comments made about dental picks being in my, there was a dental pick in my glove compartment because my son had gotten braces. Never mind, you can buy dental picks from Walmart, the dollar store, Walgreens, CVS, everywhere on the face of the planet that sells anything, you can buy dental picks. But my son had gotten braces sometime before that. In the kit for braces, they actually give you dental picks. So uh, you're getting used to the braces, you know? And if you get food in your teeth, in your braces, you can get it out with the dental picks, right? So one of the dental picks that fell out of that envelope and was just in my, um, my car, you know, in the glove box. Um, just in, in, in the glove box. And, um, yeah, apparently, uh, it was said, this is her drug paraphernalia. Like, when it was found, it was like, oh, there's a drug, there's her drug paraphernalia. Just, just found paraphernalia. And the cop was like, what? What did you find? Dental pick. That's to clean her crack pipe out. So, she must have a crack pipe in here somewhere, unless she's a dentist. <laughs> what? Uh, so yeah, um, right before I left that evening, I grabbed a Red Bull, uh, stuck it in my purse because I drink Red Bulls like they're growing out of style, you know, so I grabbed a Red Bull, put it in my purse, and when I was pulled over, it was still in my purse, so when they searched my purse, he pulled the Red Bull out and was like, oh, look at this, got a Red Bull in her purse, like, okay, and? Well, there's still, you can still see where I was arrested, but, so when you get arrested, it's still on your record. It may say dismissed, I'm not even sure, but an arrest stays on your record. Uh, you have to get that expunged. So that's what we're in the process of doing right now, expunging it. Um, I did not sue K KJ. Everyone that has ever been, ever had to deal, wanted to sue her, whether it's for doxing them, or for defamation. Exactly. Doxing them like she did to me. Or defamation like she also did to me. <laughs> I know. Um, I was just blown away to know that a dental pick is considered drug paraphernalia. Like what? Busy. Busy. Busy is his little friend, bread friend that was making jokes about the chalk in my car. It was like they didn't believe me. You know, like, oh, chalk. Of course, chalk.
I'm like, does Pops not understand that dental picks are sold at every store? Why is that a paraphernalia? What? So, yeah. Um, I didn't sue KJ, but yes, I did reach a settlement, um, with the PD. I, I can't say who I sued, but I mean, I think I could say police. I just can't say which actually police agency that I sued. Like, I can't say like Baton Rouge, whatever, you know what I'm saying? But, um, so KJ gets your bankruptcy info and two weeks later, you're pulled over for no reason looking for drugs. And the very next day, KJ goes live telling everyone, oh, yeah. We all have our opinions, you know what I'm saying? But really, when I was first arrested, um, and I first started saying, you guys, this doesn't make sense, when I'm able to tell you guys about what happened, you're also gonna set, understand this doesn't make sense. I actually wasn't blaming her. I was literally just saying it doesn't make sense. Like, something's amiss here. And she took that and was like, she's blaming me. And then all her... Um, and then all her subscribers were, like, everywhere. Like, oh, my God, did you see that LB's blaming KJ? Like, LB literally thinks that KJ flew to L.A. to put drugs in her car. And it was like, oh, my God, that's not what I said, you people. I didn't say that. He just wrote it for the first time. Ever in 2020, my dad, the professor, with his ex-gang banger BFF. <laughs> they're from very different worlds, but they're best friends. Talk for hours on the phone. They're the best. That's so weird, Bossy, because my BFF, what's so weird is I, I, I don't do drugs. I've never been a drug person. Um, I've never been a drug person. I've always been scared of drugs. Uh, my boyfriend did drugs in front of me one time when I was like 15 years old and I cried and I went home and I told on him. I told my dad. I was like, he just did drugs in front of me. Do something to him. You know what I'm saying? Um, back then, my dad had an addiction problem, so <laughs> he didn't really do anything. Um, but I've always been terrified of drugs. I'm terrified of guns. I've always been terrified, terrified of drugs. Um, but my best friend has suffered with addiction for a long time. And she actually just made a year sober. So our best friend, our really, it's really weird as well. Um, because she is a lot, she's been in and out of jail. And that's crazy. When she found out that I was arrested, she was like, oh, heck no. No, <laughs> she doesn't do drugs. Um, so she actually just made her one year sobriety. Um, and she was going to get her chip Tuesday. But they rescheduled it to the 30th of this month because I think Tuesday was like the 4th of July or something. Um, so on the 30th of this month, I'm going to be traveling to go see my friend get her one year sobriety chip. And spiders. Scared of spiders. Spiders, snakes, drugs, and guns. I know, tiny treasure, I know. But it was that friend. It was that friend that was like, it's probably that YouTuber that set my friend up. Let me find out. That's what my friend said. Uh, that's what my friend said. <laughs> Drugs, snakes, spiders, and guns is not my stuff. It ain't it. Not my... <laughs> yeah, me, me and her met in like second grade. So she dealt with her things in life and I become a mother and, you know, I mean... Thank you, Laced and Chains. Thank you. Oh, yes, Valerie. Well, not not to her. I mean, um, I, I just saying no in general is hard for me. Like, my friend, when she was an active, um, an active addict, she kind of stayed away from me. Like, she didn't come around that much. Um, because she didn't want me, she didn't be, a, she didn't want to be around me under the influence, and she didn't want me to know that she was under the influence. Now, as far as saying yes, yeah, like if my brother was like, "Hey, can I borrow your car?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure, okay, take care of it, please." <laughs> um, knowing that I didn't need to let him do it um, for the longest, I, people would borrow money from us, 
and I would not tell them no. And that caused a lot of problems for me and Sean because I was always handing out money to my family. <laughs> Sean said that's why I married her, so I can run all over her. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, me and Sean literally was the one that kind of pulled me in. I was like, you can tell them no. Like, you, everyone that asks you for money, you don't have to give it to them. You know, like, you can tell them no. And uh, I finally did. I finally, finally started telling people, we broke. <laughs> we ain't got no money to give you. We broke. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. Yeah, there has been two people that has always stuck by her side. Be quick to call her out if she's in the wrong, but still stick by her side. And that's me and her grandma. So over time, my friend has lost her dad, her siblings, her mom, all of her friends. Um, but me and her mom has been the two that has always stuck by her side. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We all think you are perfect and we love you. Thank you. I can go with that. I can go with that. Oh, L. Don't know how that feels. My husband gets mad at me for giving to a family member with an act of addiction. Um, can I borrow 20? We're broke. <laughs> We're broke. So you can super chat me? Sure. <laughs> um, sure thing. I think that's how it works, right? Like, Sean's like, why can't you stand up to other people the way you stand up to me? Like, you don't have a problem telling me no. But you don't tell anybody else no, which I do now. I do tell people no now. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, which I did. Just, so right after it got dismissed, I did a live stream where I discussed some of it. I don't think I discussed everything. Um, but then I had to take it down. I had to take it down because I was like, well, if we sue, I don't need to have that up. I don't need to have any discussion of what happened up. So I had to take it down. Um, but yeah, it's nice just to be free from, from it. Now, I do wish I could talk more about the process of the litigation because that was an experience as well. Um, but you know, you win some, you lose some. She worked for municipal court. The police station people started to talk to everyone, asked me to talk. Hey, she totally took me out of her life. Um, there's a lot of people that get addicted to pills on accident. Um, I know so many people that got addicted to pills uh, from, like, broken arm. Um, uh, I mean, okay, so I know this person. She was a female. Her mama was an addict. And she was young. And she would start her period, anything. I'm on my period. Do you have anything for my period? And her mama would give her a hydrocodone. And then she ended up becoming addicted as well. Right where I should be. Hello. <laughs> they tried. They tried. 2019 was probably one of the worst years of my life. Definitely. 2019 going into 2020. It finally started getting better. You know, when I got those results back and I could post them and say, bam, here you go. Negative drug test results. Hair follicle. Goes back a long time. 10 panel. Nothing. I think it was 10 panel. I don't really remember. I know it cost me $260. My case was contingency. So we did have to pay the attorney. It's weird. She was driving to work high at the police station. That's terrible. I think so. Like, I swear, I have always had the... People sniff me out as being a pushover. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird. And then when you do start standing up and setting boundaries and saying... Well, no, I want to continue. You know, I'm going to do it this way. Then you're the worst person ever. You're a B-I-T-C-H. 
You're not this nice little southern girl that everybody makes you out to be. It's like, why? Because one time I said no. Because one time I said, well, I'm going to continue doing things my way. Now I'm a terrible person. Oh, okay. Yeah, take the negative and turn it into a positive. I really want to figure out what I can do moving forward to stop this from happening, though. To stop uh, where other people... Well, first off, I wanted to make it to where our town... They don't arrest people and put them in jail based off those roadside drug tests. I also want to make sure that, hey, Julie, I also want to make sure that they um, train our police properly on how to read them. Like, I read online that you're not supposed to administer them over, like, the hood of a car because the heat coming up from the hood of the car could mess with the chemicals in it and could change the outcome there's so many different things you know shame on you for telling me no i know hey julie i'm at work i will watch later this evening even though i know the story love you girl don't let nothing bring her oh thank you she doesn't believe in jesus which i'm not bashing anybody that you know i believe in jesus i'm a christian my hope will be for everybody to um but it's very weird because I've heard her say things like, pray for us, or we prayed for them. And I'm like, but who are you, who are you? I guess you can pray. I guess there's, I guess just because you don't believe in Jesus, you, you can still pray to somebody, right? Those roadside drug tests are the problem. Almost every department is supposed to have a specific amount of drug police who can physically tell by your eyes in reaction to late, reaction to, yeah, if you're on drugs, right. Oh, oh, you know what, you know, okay. So they did comment on the fact that I talk fast. They said that I was like geeked up because I talk fast. First off, I talk fast. My grandfather talks fast. My, well, I think my dad talks decently fast. But my grandpa is a talker. He talks loud and he talks fast. I remember growing up, they'd always be like, you just like your grandpa. Because <laughs> I'm loud and fast. Um, and when I get nervous, I really, like, even more, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Could you imagine me on drugs? The way that I already am like loud and fast. So yeah, they actually um, did make a comment about me talking fast. Like, oh, it's clear that she's on drugs. She's talking fast. Does cocaine make you fast? Is cocaine? Yeah, I think it is, right? It's a stimulant. Is it? My mom started giving me Xanax when I was 12, started 20. Oh my goodness, got bad after I broke my lower back. I was prescribed Oxy, but eight years sober. By the grace of God, having my son save me. That is awesome, Tara. That is awesome. Are you an air sign or fire? I am not sure. I am an Aquarius. Um, I don't, I don't, that, that's awesome, Tara. I mean, that's terrible that, you know, your mom started giving you Xanax, but. I mean, I had a friend that did the same thing. Her mom started giving her hydrocodone for her period. Well, when I got arrested, when I got arrested in December 2019, she had about, she had about, no, she had about 50K. Because I remember when I went down, I had about 17 or 18K. And she had blew up with the um, Andrew Glennon and Amber Portwood stuff. She had about 50K back then. It's still nowhere near as much as she has now, you know, but it was definitely a decent amount. It felt like she had a million subscribers. Literally, going back and watching those videos of her talking about me and seeing everybody's comment pop up and them saying, you know, what they said, it literally felt like I was watching a million people talk bad about me. You speak fast, but it's clear, not slur. Cocaine is stimulant, speed, in other words. Gotcha. of the coke <laughs> no my paper never put out anything to correct it ever that was something that i wanted um in the settlement i was hoping that i could get an apology a public apology and that they would do a redaction but that didn't happen feel very blessed here and have my boy i bet so i know my my thank you angela my friend who has dealt with that she's She's lost some people as well. 
that's probably true, Brandy Gray. Probably true. Here, I'm so sorry, Carrie, that you got blocked defending me. I'm sorry. By Katie? I don't know. <laughs> probably. It was supposed to, Jay Marie. Back of the DKE house, dinner around the fire, all six or so of us yelling, shut up at each other. Shut up! <laughs> all geeked up. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get off. It's, oh, it's 8 o'clock. Okay. Yeah, I got a video I need to edit. Um, it was fun to hang out with you. I got to eat my sandwich before the bread gets hard. Um, but I'm so glad that I was able to tell you guys my story. Um, answer any questions that you guys had. I would rather the money than apology. I was hoping I'd get both. Um, that was what I wanted as part of the settlement. Like, as part of it. To get the money. And an apology. And put out in our paper, the same paper that listed my arrest, to say, oh, no, sorry. She was innocent. <laughs> but they didn't. Um, but, you know, you can't have it all, I guess. Um, but I'm going to be, uh, what's tonight? Tuesday? We'll probably do another live stream Thursday night, maybe. I'm also going to start doing member streams where we're going to read Leah Messer's book. That's going to be coming up very soon. i got to figure out exactly when I can start that because probably what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to do like maybe like a Tuesday night and a Wednesday night live stream to cover the book. Um, that'll be a members thing. That's one of the perks of having my members, and I really need to start doing better for my members because I haven't done that great for my members. I know you guys, but I'm going to hop back on that. So um, that'll be one of the first things we do is go over that book for my members. Um, and then any other books you guys want me to go over, or we could just do live streams where we just chit-chat. We're going to have the bash chat when the kids go back to school, like in August. We're going to try to get that one up and running. And um, that's where we'll co go over your stories. If you've been falsely arrested, email me your story. And me and Sean, we will. Um, it's probably going to be both of us on that channel. It may just be him for a minute. I don't know. Um, but we're going to, hopefully that's what our desire is for that channel. I have a few names in mind for... Um, for that channel because we're going to change it it's the bash chat right now but i think we're going to change it to um what was it my moderator candy came up with a good one and it was like i don't remember i'll have to ask her it's like crime and collusion or something like that i don't know um but anyways you know it's going to be a, a while before we get that done but we are Um, but yeah, thank you guys all for hanging out with me. If you are new to this channel and this is the first time you've watched me, thank you so much. If you have a similar story and you want it talked about, like I said, it's going to be a few months before we get that ball rolling on that channel. It's called The Bash Chat. I'll link it in the description box below. Um, keep your eye on this channel. Subscribe to this channel and that one. And when we do start doing that one, if you want your story told, please email us. I wonder, Tanya, it doesn't, I'm not opposed to that idea. I do think it's a possibility. Um, but yeah, you guys leave me all your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure you give this video a huge thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.